aku lagi di N21 nih Unit bisnis punya kampus yang bisa dipakai sesuai kebutuhan Fasilitas? Jangan ditanya Jalanan sekitar SVUGM emang adem banget Gak jarang aku pinjam sepeda kampus Karena di lengkongan UGM memprioritaskan pejalan kaki dan pesepeda Stasiun sepedanya banyak Bisa keliling fakultas di UGM Cara minjemnya pun gampang Tinggal nunjukin KTM Beres Hidup sehat bisa dimulai dengan cara yang simple Kayak aku ini nih Naik sepeda ke kampus Kuliah di sini emang seru. Sebagai mahasiswa tingkat akhir, perpustakaan jadi sahabat aku. Tempatnya adem dan tenang, enak buat ngerjain tugas. Ada juga ruang bonus untuk diskusi. Lagi ada proyek kelompok, namanya perpustakaan. Betah. Ah, ini VDC, satu dari sedikit pusat karir di UGM. Bagi aku dan mahasiswa sekolah vokasi UGM lainnya, keberadaan VDC sangat mendukung karir kami. Berbagai pelatihan difasilitasi, konsultasi karir dapat kita ikuti. Secara berkala, VDC menyelenggarakan job fair, khususnya bagi lulusan SVUGM. Sebagai syarat kelulusan bagi mahasiswa SVUGM, VDC sangat berjasa sebagai lembaga penyedia info magang serta penyelenggara tes English for Vocational Students atau biasa disingkat TVOX. Dunia perkuliahan tak melulu soal belajar ilmu pengetahuan dan mempersiapkan karir. Di SVUGM Aku bebas mengasah bakat dan mengekspresikan diri melalui UKM pilihan Seperti aku ini nih, lagi ada di Gasita Unit yang memperkenalkan tentang gamelan Yang sudah berprestasi di dalam maupun di luar negeri Aku lagi di N21 nih Unit bisnis punya kampus yang bisa dipakai sesuai kebutuhan Fasilitas? Jangan ditanya Jalanan sekitar SVUGM emang adem banget Gak jarang aku pinjam sepeda kampus Karena di lengkongan UGM memprioritaskan pejalan kaki dan pesepeda Stasiun sepedanya banyak bisa keliling fakultas di UGM. Cara minjemnya pun gampang, tinggal nunjukin KTM, 
beres Hidup sehat bisa dimulai dengan cara yang simple Kayak aku ini nih, naik sepeda ke kampus Kuliah di sini emang seru banget karena berbasis vokasional. Ya, jadi video klipnya di TV itu dominasi sih. praktik sesuai bidang yang dipelajari. Laboratorium dan alatnya sesuai kebutuhan. Dosen-dosennya tersertifikasi. Nggak jarang dapat kuliah umum dari berbagai perusahaan. Tentunya yang sudah bermitra dengan SPUGM. Lagi ngapain? Ini nih lagi cek-cek beasiswa baru Lagi oh, cek-cek beasiswa? Iya, udah lihat belum di vokasi GMF? Belum Iya <laughs> banget Oh iya, bagus ya Eh iya, kalian tahu nggak ada berita baru loh di Instagram SQGM? Ini coba lihat, ada expert luar negeri Ini ada Korea Food Festival, ada Summer Corp Oh iya, Banyak bagus kan? ya Sebagai mahasiswa tingkat akhir, perpustakaan jadi sahabat aku. Tempatnya adem dan tenang, enak buat ngerjain tugas. Ada juga ruang khusus untuk diskusi. Untuk yang lagi ada proyek kelompok, namanya perpus bikin betah. Ini VDC, satu dari sedikit pusat karir di UGM. Bagi aku dan mahasiswa sekolah vokasi UGM lainnya, keberadaan VDC sangat mendukung karir kami. Berbagai pelatihan difasilitasi, konsultasi karir dapat kita ikuti. Secara berkala, VDC menyelenggarakan job fair, khususnya bagi lulusan SPUGM. Sebagai syarat kelulusan bagi mahasiswa SPUGM, VDC sangat berjasa sebagai lembaga penyedia info magang serta penyelenggara tes English for Vocational Students atau biasa disingkat TVOX. Dunia perkuliahan tak melulu soal belajar ilmu pengetahuan dan mempersiapkan karir. Di SPUGM Aku bebas mengasah bakat dan mengekspresikan diri melalui UKM pilihan Seperti aku ini nih, lagi ada di Gasita Unit yang memperkenalkan tentang gamelan Yang sudah berprestasi di dalam maupun di luar negeri Aku lagi di N21 nih Unit bisnis punya kampus yang bisa dipakai sesuai kebutuhan Fasilitas? Jangan ditanya Jalanan sekitar SVUGM emang adem banget Gak jarang aku pinjam sepeda kampus Karena di lingkungan UGM memprioritaskan pejalan kaki dan pesepeda Stasiun sepedanya banyak bisa keliling fakultas di UGM Cara minjemnya pun gampang Tinggal nunjukin KTM Beres Hidup sehat bisa dimulai dengan cara yang simple Kayak aku ini nih Naik sepeda ke kampus Kuliah di sini emang seru banget Karena berbasis vokasional ya, Jadi video klipnya di TV itu sih Kuliah praktik sesuai bidang yang dipelajari Laboratorium dan alatnya sesuai kebutuhan. Dosen-dosennya tersertifikasi. Nggak jarang dapat kuliah umum dari berbagai perusahaan. Tentunya yang sudah bermitra dengan SPUGM. Eh, Oka tuh. Oka! Eh... Hey. 
Lagi ngapain? Ini nih lagi cek-cek beasiswa baru Lagi oh, cek-cek beasiswa? Iya, udah lihat belum di vokasi GMF? Belum Iya <laughs> banget Oh iya, bagus ya Eh iya, kalian tahu nggak ada berita baru loh di Instagram SVGM? Coba lihat, ada Expert Warranty Ini ada Korea Food Festival, ada Summer Corp Oh iya, Banyak bagus kan? ya Sebagai mahasiswa tingkat akhir, perpustakaan jadi sahabat aku. Tempatnya adem dan tenang, enak buat ngerjain tugas. Ada juga ruang khusus untuk diskusi. Untuk yang lagi ada proyek kelompok, namanya perpus bikin betah. Ah, ini VDC, satu dari sedikit pusat karir di UGM. Bagi aku dan mahasiswa sekolah vokasi UGM lainnya, keberadaan VDC sangat mendukung karir kami. Berbagai pelatihan difasilitasi, konsultasi karir dapat kita ikuti. Secara berkala, VDC menyelenggarakan job fair, khususnya bagi lulusan SPUGM. Sebagai syarat kelulusan bagi mahasiswa SPUGM, VDC sangat berjasa sebagai lembaga penyedia info magang serta penyelenggara test English for Vocational Students atau biasa disingkat TVOX. Dunia perkuliahan tak melulu soal belajar ilmu pengetahuan dan mempersiapkan karir. Di SPUGM Aku bebas mengasah bakat dan mengekspresikan diri melalui UKM pilihan Seperti aku ini nih, lagi ada di Gasita Unit yang memperkenalkan tentang gamelan Yang sudah berprestasi di dalam maupun di luar negeri Sekarang aku lagi di N21 nih Unit bisnis punya kampus yang bisa dipakai sesuai kebutuhan Fasilitas? Jangan ditanya Jalanan sekitar SVUGM emang adem banget Gak jarang aku pinjam sepeda kampus Karena di lingkungan UGM memprioritaskan pejalan kaki dan pesepeda Stasiun sepedanya banyak
first is opening. After rising Indonesian national anthem, we will hear speech from head of department of language, art and culture management, vocational school, Universitas Gajah Mada, and official opening and speech from dean of vocational school, Universitas Gajah Mada. Second is main sessions, divided into three sessions. Session one with Dr. Imade Andi Arsana from Universitas Gajah Mada as a speaker, and me, Kifari Yuristiadi, as a moderator. Continued session two with Professor Wang Zhou Hui from Chengdu Textile College, China, and Associate Professor Muhammad Hafiz Muhammad Hanafia from University Technology Mara, Malaysia, accompanied by Ms. Andri Handayani as moderator. The last but not least is session three with Dr. Kandidat Andi Azhar from Asia University, Taiwan, and Febriani Alfida Tihtarani from Seoul National University, Korea, and will be moderated by Ms. Ayu Merlitasari. And third is closing. We hope and pray our agenda today are running well as we hope. Amen. We will start our agenda today with opening. Please rise for the national anthem of the Republic of Indonesia. Thank you. We invite Head of Department of Language, Arts and Culture Management, Vocational School, Universitas Gajah Mada to deliver the speech representing the organizing committee. Dr. Endang Sulistiawati, the time is yours. Thank you, Pak Kivari. Um, yeah, good morning, Pak Dekan, Pak Agus Mariono. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to these sessions. I would also would like to thank my express to express my gratitude and warmest greeting to special keynote speakers today, um, Papa Professor Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Muhammad Hanafi from University Technology Mara, Malaysia, um, also to Professor Huang Zhao Hui from Chengdu Textile College. An old friend, like a family. How are you, Prof. Wang? Thank you for being here. And also, Dr. Andy Asar from Asia University, Taiwan. 
a very friendly and charming lecture from Asia University. Nice to see you today. Um, I would like to also thank uh, Dr. Imade Andi Arsana, our role model, the Director of International Affairs UKM, a public speaker and also motivator for us all. I um, also would like to thank uh, Ms. Febriani Afida, Hayo, Ayong Aseo, Bu Febi, it's been a long time, from Seoul National University. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe you all agree that COVID-19 has changed a lot of aspects in our lives. In all of a sudden, students remain at home. We work from home and offices were also closed. This condition urges us to redesign many things. We need to adjust ourselves to keep working at home um, with our safety, health issues as our top priorities. Universities, higher education institutions are the ones that got the impacts too from this condition. We shifted from offline to into online. Suddenly we have to teach, educate, approach students differently. We all need to adjust ourselves. We suddenly have to maintain some space between us, wearing masks, also face shields, washing our hands regularly more often than it used to be. Um, this morning opportunity in this session, we shall be learning from many best of friends of ours from Chengdu Textile College, China, University Technology, Marai, Malaysia, Asia University, Taiwan, and also uh, Seoul National University from Korea, and of course from UKM Indonesia. Um, how we all cope with this issue in our institution, how do we change and how to adjust to keep survive and still present, present our best to our students in our institution, what should we do? From this event, we shall learn from one another, strengthen, encourage, and also motivate us all to keep survive and still provide the best for our institution and our students. So um, once again, I would like to thank all the speakers for the time, despite the busy schedule, to still manage to be here with us all to share knowledge and experience. Thank you for all participants too, for all the enthusiasm this morning. So let's enjoy the sessions and learn from our fabulous speakers. Thank you, good morning. Thank you, Dr. Endang Sulisteowati for your speech. She is always passionate and always gives positive energy to all of us. Next, we invite the Dean of Vocational School, Universitas Gajah Mada, to deliver a speech as well as officially open this event. Dr. Engineer Agus Mariono, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, yeah, distinguished speakers from several countries, uh, distinguished uh, organizing committee to Mrs. Dr. Endang and his team and her team who already set up this uh, webinar for inciting. This is, I think, a uh, seventh uh, seminar in vocational college, University of Gajah Mada. Uh, distinguished speaker, Ima, uh, Dr. Imadi Andi Arsana from Gajah Mada University. Distinguished speaker, Professor Wang Chao Hu from Chengdu Textile College, China. And Professor Dr. Muhammad Hafiz uh, Muhammad Hanafia from University of Technology, Mara, Malaysia, and also distinguished speakers, Dr. Andy Azar from ASEAN University Taiwan, and Ms. Fibana Elvida Triktarani from Seoul University, Korea. Thank you very much for your attending this uh, very nice seminar, and thank you too for your time spending here. 
to keep more impulse and information about social social cultural change during COVID-19 in your country and our country. Let me show you first our faculty, just short, our college, so that we can then continue collaboration with your university or your institution. This is the main building of our university, University of Gajah Mada, Gajah Mada University. And this is the three big building, uh, part of our building. And we have a motto in Harmonia Progressio for innovation, collaboration, and uh, solution too. Yeah, innovations, we have to have innovation because our situation is changed dramatically right now in your country too. But so we have to have a collaboration with another, another expert and also people around us to look for solution. Um, and more than 50,000 alumni. This is very big uh, university, uh, big college in Kajamada University, the biggest side things, number two, yeah? Number one is Faculty of Engineering and number two is the uh, college, the uh, vocational college. One thing that I want to show you that our students from our treasure study 2020, 85% working less than six months. Yeah, and even 27 students working before they already finish, they finish this uh, study. So I think this is very nice, but due to COVID, we have a problem then. Now maybe we, we will discuss about that. Due to COVID, we have a problem, but we haven't, we haven't have a next stressor study. We would like to have that. How many students get a job in this very hard situation. But in the meantime, we have also uh, aid for student, uh, giving to student logistic for the student who has a problem. And then we have also uh, aid for uh, pools for student. We have 7,187 students who already got uh, uh, subsidence financial from us to buy uh, internet tools. And then now we thinking about our future. We have a very big buildings, but now we still have work from home, no student in there. And we, will, we would like to have a two new big building in the next. And we are afraid if we have, we still have a problem with COVID-19. So we have to have find a solution for that things, yeah? Now, the, the solution is first, we would like to have a network with our local network with Chukchakta Special Region. It's not only in technical uh, point of view, but also for cultural and social point of view. So then we can live together, even we have a problem with pandemic COVID. And we would like to extend our collaboration with the whole Indonesian national network here. And of course, yeah, here is Java, you, we live here. And here's Sumatra, here Kalimantan, Sulawesi. This is Moluka and this is Papua, West Papua. This is our country. And I think we would like to have very intense collaboration with our country. This seminar result would like to, uh, we will, we will uh, uh, send to our colleague in the whole islands in Indonesia uh, for their uh, understanding, more understanding about the cultural problem, uh, social cultural change within uh, COVID-19. And then we would like also to have, of course, with you, with China, with Taiwan, Korea, with ASEAN country and all, to have a more and more discussion, more and more collaboration, even distant collaboration, we can do that, yeah. And uh, 
we would like to have also global network with the whole uh, uh, country in the world to discuss what will be going on then after after a pandemic or in within the pandemic okay that was our uh, hope that this seminar will be very uh, fruitful seminar the seminar and the result we will also deliver to the others uh, uh, community uh, vocational college all of indonesian island and also we will we will uh, have a uh, 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 special special uh, seminar for internal seminar to discuss about the, the, the result of this webinar so again thank you very much for your attending and your time uh, for this very important seminar and in the end, I would like to open this seminar. With Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I open this seminar. Thank you very much. I will give it to the Master of Ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Engineer Agus Mariono, for your inspired speech. We always pray and support for Pa Agus to advance and develop a better vocational school UGM in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue to our main agenda. Nevertheless, before we start this main agenda, I invite you to prepare your question and to type it in the Zoom chat box or YouTube comment. Thank you. For first session, I will act as moderator. In this session, I will accompany someone special. He was born in Tabanan, Bali, Indonesia. May 12, 42 years ago. He is a graduate from Universitas Gajah Mada for his bachelor in geodesy engineering. New South Wales in Australia for his master and from Wollongong University in Australia for his doctor. He is an author for many motivational book. I'm one of the reader of his book actually. He is also a student and public motivator with his Instagram. For your information, his Instagram account is the account with the most followers among the lecturers in UGM. Since 2014, he was being a head of International Affair, Affair Office, Universitas Gajah Mada. I made sure I don't tell his name wrong. Dr. Imade Andi Arsana, not I made Andi Arsana. <laughs> in this in this session, uh, in the session one, Pak Andi will convey the socio-cultural change during the pandemic in Indonesian higher education institution. Maybe also more specifically, Universitas Gajah Mada. Pak Andi, the time is yours. All right. Thank you very much, Pak Gifari, for a very, very nice introduction. Pak <laughs> uh, Agus, uh, senior saya, Maturnun, thank you very much for inviting me, for having me. Uh, Ibu Endang, my favorite lecturer, <laughs> thank you very much for having me, Bu. Uh, we also here have uh, distinguished professors from, I have to read, I don't want to be wrong yet. Professor Wang, uh, also Professor uh, Hafiz. We also have two uh, good friends here, uh, Mas Andi and uh, Febriani, so thank you very much for being here with us uh, today. If you don't mind, uh, Pak Gifari, I will uh, show my own presentation myself. So if you can uh, close this one, I'll show my <coughs> PPT myself. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so this is actually a, a holiday in Indonesia, but thank you very much for uh, to our <laughs> colleagues in vocational school. Uh, you work really, really hard even during holiday. Uh, let me now show you my presentation I hope all right I know that I don't have uh, much time it's only 20 to 30 minutes I think is it correct Pak Gifari yes Pandit. Uh, navigating higher education during and post global pandemic so I really want to echo what Pak Agus mentioned about it is not only post pandemic but during the pandemic what we have, we have to do uh, allow me to start this conversation by telling you or retelling you the, a story about that uh, global pandemic is actually not new to the world. 
So we had already a number of global pandemic. One of them is cholera. So while at that time cholera was considered as a global pandemic, as a disaster, but a few uh, years after that, or uh, like 10 or 20 years after that, people started to create arts out of that uh, global pandemic. So this is uh, one of the novel that I, I think uh, a lot of people here knows, Love in the Time of Cholera, which is actually based on a global pandemic. So how something in one particular time become disaster and then later on it becomes inspiration to work. I think this is how we uh, can view a uh, disaster. So in terms of development of science, for example, still related to Korea, uh, sorry, cholera, let me uh, tell you one, once again on the story. So in London at the time, in 1850s, during the cholera, what happens is that there's a global pandemic, a lot of people died. Uh, so people at that time believed that the cause of the death is air, because almost everybody, like well, not almost everybody, a lot of people in the in the city of London uh, passed away. So of course everybody will think that oh the co the cause is air, the assumption. One only one people at a time, his name is John Nash, didn't believe that. I don't believe that this is the cause of uh, the death is air, but John Nash uh, not only didn't believe that he did something about it. He went. Uh, all over the, the city of London. And what he did is actually to map the position of well, Sumur. And then he also mapped the position or the location of casualties, the death uh, people. Now, if I show you this, I don't think uh, we still think that the cause of the death is air because it is not as, you know, uh, even as what we thought about. So the death, the location of that is actually in one particular location of the right? I think Pa Agus is an expert of air, uh, water and river. I think I uh, understand this <laughs> very well, that if you are given this kind of data, what are you going to do? And John Nash at the time, uh, sorry, John Snow at the time, requested the council of the city to test the quality of water. And then it was proven that the cause of the death is the polluted water. So this, I think, is, is an example how new uh, development of science can, can take place due to global pandemic, when we have enough curiosity. So that is what we are going to, to talk about uh, in this. Uh. Now, we have, we usually say this about no, uh, normal, new normal. So what happened is that when we have a situation like a uh, regular situation, we say that normal. Why normal? Because everything is done in a normal way. We, we know what to do and things like that. But when we have the problems and it uh, reached the peak of the problem, we expect that the situation will go back to normal. So that's why we call it back to normal. But when it comes to COVID-19, it doesn't work that way. So we cannot really go back to the original stage, but now we have to go to, go to a certain stage that we have to accept as a normal. That's what we call the new normal. Now, what is the current situation? I would like to refer to what happens in Universitas Gajah Mada. Uh, first, very obvious, the learning, uh, and teachings is now different. So this is me in my class, no longer in my class, by the way. I, if you see here uh, on the left, uh, up, upper left, uh, I appeared in the screen, of course. Uh, upper right, uh, I, I was teaching in the uh, airport. So that's what happened. And then uh, lower left, I was teaching from the US from a toilet, a hotel toilet. Why? Because, of course, because of some other reasons. And this is actually my studio, if I may say, quote unquote, my studio back home. My studio is just as simple as this. So if you see me now doing what I'm presenting now, it looks like this. So I basically put my laptop on the uh, a box over there and there's a chair next to my, uh, my bed. So this is what happened now. We accept this as a new reality, as a, as a new normal. So this is, I think, uh, nothing new. Uh, to us uh, at the moment but if you think about this like one two three years ago let alone 10 years ago nobody would even think about this to to give you an information i started to teach online in 2007 when i was in the us and at the time it was very strange and like a lot of people didn't really like my approach like why would you do that uh, even when you teach um, in person the students do not really pay attention to you so how can you grab their attention when you are far away in different uh, 
continent, for example. So that is a kind of a, a perception that we had back then, but now it becomes reality, okay? This is a kind of test of flexibility, in my opinion. So because uh, of this global pandemic, we are tested in terms of flexibility, how flexible we are in utilizing technology, in changing our approach in teaching and all of those kind of things. So if, for example, I'm old enough as uh, Pak Gifari already mentioned, I'm 40 something. So when I was in uh, SD or uh, primary school, for example, the board is black and the chalk is uh, white at the time. When I was in SMP and SMA or high school, the other way around, the board is white and we use that uh, board marker, if you remember, if I very right. So, and then uh, we had uh, overhead projector, we have LCD, all those kind of things. And now we have YouTube, we have Zoom like this. So the thing is that the change has always been there. And the thing is that uh, whether or not we are flexible enough to adapt, that's the question. I think COVID-19 really uh, test us how, uh, whether or not we are flexi flexible enough in, in adapt a new situation. Uh, we always say about online summer, uh, sorry, summer program, for example, now we cannot really do that. Mobility, 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 we keep saying that uh, because what we imagine about mobility is physical mobility. Now it's no longer uh, a reality because it is not possible for us to trans, uh, to, you know, basically mobilize our students to different countries. Now we adapt into online summer program. This seminar, I believe, if it is not due to COVID-19, I would have been uh, in a room with Ibu Endang in vocational school or in some hotel in, you know, somewhere. But now because of this, we do it differently, which I think is, is, a, is a part of the, the way we adapt. Uh, social movement, we have a lot of problems actually in our society now that we can actually relate quite uh, well. For example, Indonesia and China, Indonesia and Thailand, Indonesia and Malaysia, we in fact have a, a similar issue and we now we can uh, create a social movement jointly through online. It is a lot easier somehow now to gather people, gather quote unquote, uh, like, like for example, today we have like hundred something people in a holiday to attend a seminar. I don't think it is an easy thing to do when it is uh, done uh, offline, for example, right? So, so this I think is, is a good example that there's, there are opportunities for us uh, during the global pandemic. Surprise, surprise, we also do the, uh, the student community service in UGM through online system. So for those who, does, uh, who don't really know that uh, UGM or our university uh, oblige uh, the student to live with the community for two uh, years. So before you graduate, you cannot really uh, graduate before you do that thing. So we send our students like 7,000 of them all over Indonesia. Uh, can you imagine now with the COVID-19, we have to change the strategy. Now we do it online. It is not perfect, but yet, once again, we are forced to innovate what we can do uh, to deal with the situation. Whenever I, I show this to our uh, friend overseas, for example, I, send, I said, uh, okay, we send 7,000 students all over Indonesia. I said, like, why is it special? Uh, because sending students to your own country is not really special. Of course it is special because if we overlay this map onto European map, it looks like that. So sending 7,000 students to all over Indonesia, also it, it means sending 7,000 people to all over Europe because the size of Indonesia is, is massive from Ireland to Kazakhstan, for example. So this is uh, just to give you an insight what, uh, how complicated, how complex the program can be now. And now we have to do it online. Uh, now, the last part. Education in anticipating the future of works, that is how we call it. So the future trends is, is what uh, I was uh, asked to say, I uh, was asked to deliver. Basically, the future of work is, is what I'm, I would like to say. First, the work in the future is borderless. This is, I strongly believe. Meaning that whatever you study now, it doesn't really guarantee you will work on that particular field because there's no one single field now uh, living alone and solving problems. Uh, we believe that there is always collaboration among uh, disciplines. So that's why we, we really strongly um, uh, promote the interdisciplinary approach in any, anything and any kind. So if you think about Baudelaire's career, can you imagine what Gojek is all about? Gojek is the, uh, probably one of the fast growing, not unicorn anymore, it's Decacorn de de already. 
uh, it is like Grab in uh, in Malaysia, uh, Professor Hafiz. So this is actually developed by someone who graduated from international relation. What does an international relation student have anything to do with motorbike, Gojek, Go Food? So because uh, and and this particular guy is now our educational minister. Mr. Nadim Makarim. So what uh, he meant by saying that is that it is, you have to anticipate that you might not work in a particular field that you study now, because in, in the future, like not, not really far future, like four, five years from now, we, we cannot really anticipate what will happen. So what uh, we need to do to prepare our students is for them to enter a borderless career. So for them to anticipate, for them to understand a lot of things, in order for them to be able to adapt uh, easily. Second, uh, the, the main areas of trends in the future, so okay, I, I quote this from uh, Bang Sandi Uno, our, uh, I don't know uh, what we call it, he's uh, the former uh, vice presidential candidate, a former vice presidential candidate, but he's also a businessman. He mentioned three things in the future. First is digital disruption. Second, data revolution. Data is the new oil and longevity, longevity, people want to live a healthy life. That's basically what happened. So if we would like to go into business, these three things, according to Bang Sandi, are an options that we can uh, go to. The other one is in the future, we might not need certificates anymore. So ijazah kita mungkin nanti nggak begitu penting itu. Because Google and IBM, for example, they already clearly mentioned, they, they, they put in their ad ones, that we don't need your certificate, we need your skills. So they don't even ask our certificate when we apply for a job. So can you imagine? That is actually a bad news, if I may say, uh, uh, from the perspective of a of, uh, sorry, formal education like us. So once they don't really need any certificate, I don't think they will come to us and study. So, but what I would like to say here is that uh, uh, in a positive way, certificate is not the only thing important in life or important in, in you pursuing your career. You really have to go beyond your certificate, go beyond your, your discipline. That is how I see it. So not, not really saying that uh, you, you don't really need to go to universities in order to work uh, in, in big companies. I don't, I'm not really saying, I'm not in position to say that. Next is unpredictability. So can you imagine 10 years ago, you see someone doing this and she claimed that she's working hard. So if I show this picture to my, to my parents, for example, they are very traditional family. They will never believe that this is actually working, working for real. You know, just like me now, actually uh, talking to my laptop, for example, my father wouldn't believe that I'm actually working. I'm actually doing something that I have to do as a, as a professor, for example. So uh, unpredictability of the future is really there. So just like I said earlier, we don't really know what happens in four years or five years from now. So we better prepare our students not to do something in particular, but to adapt basically, or to be surprised. Prepare them to be surprised. That is what I, I would like to say. How to do that? Uh, thank God that we have this program uh, uh, initiated by our minister, uh, ministry, Merdeka Belajar Campus Merdeka basically uh, gave the opportunity or independence for students to study a lot of things outside of the class. Uh, eight programs are here, that's first. Second, uh, back then, if I may say that uh, I'm an engineer, by the way, I'm, I'm a geodetic engineer. I always uh, focus on my own field, it's mapping, mapping and mapping. However, outside of that, there is a, uh, at least four disciplines that I would like to also mention here. First is social. So anything has its social aspects, we really need to understand it. Second is mobile. Everything is now mobile. So whatever your, your uh, field is, you have to adapt this to the mobile technology. The third is analytics. We talk about big data and all of those kind of things. Data is the new oil once again and cloud. Back then in the 90s, what I thought is that that is a different world. So my world is my field and this are different world. It's a computer science, whatever. But now it's no longer true. Whatever your field is, you cannot uh, really avoid these four things. So that's why I introduced to you my smack social mobile analytics and cloud so meaning that we cannot really uh, say for example oh saya belajar bahasa and, and sastra and art i don't need to learn about programming i don't need to learn about cloud computing it's no longer true 
because we live in that and this becomes our reality now. So we have to remind our students that they have to also combine these four aspects into whatever field that they are studying. In the future, we are going to have the new sources of learning. Now we even already have Han Academy, Udemy, Ruanguru, edX, and Kanal Kontan, Universitas Gajah Mada. So when people can access a lot of good information and knowledge from a lot of sources, different sources, now the question is to us like, what is our relevance? Or are we still living in, in this uh, world of, of education? Or jangan jangan gak lagi gitu. And jangan jangan uh, they can go, just go to Udemy and pay twenty dollars. They can have a certificate. They can have a certificate of uh, digital sciences. Digi sorry, uh, data sciences to be data scientist. Or they go to Han Academy and pay nothing. They can master calculus or algebra, whatever. So what is our relevance? This is uh, the question for us. All right now. And the last thing is that we have to remind them to have an additional value. I always make a joke about this. So this is mobile phone, right? I'm sorry, I'm not actually uh, doing an advertisement here. This just happens to be Apple. <laughs> uh, for, for mobile phone, uh, we know that the, the main function of mobile phone is to call, right? To make a call. At least we know it from the 90s. But have you heard an advertisement nowadays to say this, for example? Hey, this mobile phone can be used to call. We don't really hear that kind of advertisement, right? So mobile phone is not advertised for its main function. It's advertised for its additional function, like what? The camera is good. The screen is really wide. The sound is crispy, all of those kind of things. So they are actually uh, sold out, not because it's main function, but because of the uh, additional function. So the, the question is to students now, what is your additional values? If you're a, a dentistry, a dentist, for example, if you say, I'm a dentist, saya uh, bisa cabut gigi, or I can take care of uh, uh, people's teeth, of course you can because you're a dentist. So you cannot really say that as, as, as uh, your advantage. You can say it as advantage if you, for example, you can sing, you can do programming, you can be a good uh, uh, master of ceremony or moderator like Pak Gifari. Or if you can do ballet, I don't know if Pak Gipari, you do, you, but you don't do ballet. Well, you know, this kind of thing, uh, basically, we can add additional values to us. And that's how you will sell yourself, if I'm saying, right? Well, I can talk on and on about this, but uh, one thing that I would like to say is that now it's 2020, right? Uh, can you imagine in 2030, for example, what will people say about us? Or in 2050? If there's an, a seminar in 2050, what will they say about 2020? And how we are dealing with this uh, COVID, what I said about uh, cholera in 1850, for example. So now I would like to uh, conclude, if I may, that COVID-19 does not actually change you. It reveals who you really are. So through the COVID-19, we reveal ourselves that we actually somebody or people who can adapt to new situations. Terima kasih, Matur Nuhun. Thank you very much. Pagi, Bali. Okay. Important key, uh, keyword that I got from Pak Andi this morning is rapid adaptation for the changes is very important. Big thanks for, for your inspiring speech, Pak Andi. Uh, now is the time for question and answer. As what I informed before, for participants, who want to ask the speaker uh, in this session, Pandi, we invite them to ask through the chat box, YouTube comment or ask question directly to Pandi. It is really you um, <laughs> change yeah, to speak uh, directly to Pandi. <laughs> okay, please, any question for all participants? We still wait, uh, Pandi. Sure. Saya malu-malu nih nanya. <laughs> malu-malu ini, Pak. <laughs> Hello. Hello, good morning. Okay, thank you, Pak Sugijo. Yes, please, Pak yeah, Sugijo. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. How about the method of education uh, in learning uh, now to adopt to the pandemic? This is uh, my question. Thank you very much. The method of education. Thank you, Pak Sukijo. Pak Andi, maybe you can directly answer Langsung the ya. question from Pak Sukijo. Uh, I think when you talk about method, uh, 
it can be a, a one day conversation or it can be like a week conversation, but it can also be a, a one minute conversation. The very first thing but, that I uh, usually apply is that uh, the mindset, like my own mindset, that the change is here. So there is no other way but to change. So meaning that uh, I'm, I'm a quite old generation. I, I started in the GME 1990s something. Uh, mm -hmm. And my lecturer at that time are still now with me as a lecturer also. Can, so can you imagine, right? So there are a lot of uh, lecturers who started to be a lecturer in 1970s now in UGM, 70 something, right? Which means that they have been there for the longest time of their life. So I, I understand it is not very easy for them to change when they already are very comfortable with their own method, with their own way. So that's why I, I always say thanks to COVID-19, because if we talk about the online teaching or blended learning, if you remember, Pak Sukijo, the rector already issued a decree, Surat Keputusan, back in 2014, if I'm not uh, wrong, that we are allowed actually or suggested or, or uh, encouraged to do this online learning or blended learning at least 30% or 40% of our teaching can be online, right? If you remember that. But can we see the difference? In my opinion, not really, honestly. With all due respect to Pak Rektor and Bu Rektor, we don't really actually apply their uh, surat keputusan or decree, but not until the COVID-19 came. So what changed us or what actually motivate us to teach online is not the surat keputusan rektor, but the COVID-19, that's reality. So the encouragement from the minister, the encouragement from rector didn't really work to be honest with you. So what uh, make it work is actually the, the COVID-19. So that's how I see it from a positive way. So that's first. That's why I, first thing is to me is mindset. And second is about the flexibility in, in utiliz utilizing technology and, and tools. Just like I said earlier, uh, I, I use actually the principles of FISC 2017. I think uh, some of you would know this. FISC 2017 introduced the Education 4.0, which nine pillars. Okay, I will say this. Nine pillars is first is it has to be anywhere, anytime. So dosen and mahasiswa have to think or have to feel that education is anywhere, anytime. Second, uh, it has to be personal, personal approach and also personal in terms of uh, uh, you know, delivery. The third is it has to be uh, flexible in delivery. So once uh, you use the overhead projector or Kapur or um, board marker, but now we use the, I don't know, like Zoom like this, or even Instagram. I, I use uh, Instagram to teach also. And that flexible delivery really helped me to connect to my students. The fourth is about mentor and mentee. So the relationship is equal, not really up and down. Next is that number five is uh, uh, we have to teach why, not how. Because if we teach how, you know, like this thing, for example, uh, the, the software can change like every month or every two months. So if we teach them how to do things using software, in four years from now, it might be obsolete already. So teach them why they learn. And the, the, the number six is uh, application, practical application. So teach them this has a practical application actually, because if you are facing the millennials and post millennial generation, they will not pay attention to you until they really can see the real application of what uh, they learn. Next is uh, in modular, so it has to be project-based modular. Uh, the next is it has to be student ownership. So if you give them this, the assignment, they don't think that they are given the assignments, but they have to do what, what uh, their project is all about. And the last thing, number nine, is it is not examination, it is evaluation. So there's two different things. So we don't examine our students because examination will you know, the result of examination is, this, is uh, a decision that you fail or you pass, right? That's what examination is all about. But evaluation is only one purpose, how to improve. So I think those nine, I know this sounds like a very uh, utopist ideas, but, uh, but at least in one or two particular uh, subject that I, I teach, 
I really want to, I really try to uh, apply this. So nine principles of education for parents here by FISC. Afternoon, thank you. Thank you, Pak Andy. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, how to uh, change our mindset. Yeah, you said just no. Yeah. Education in anywhere, anytime. It is really uh, not easy because, because maybe a student just think that if they go to a campus, uh, mm. yeah, they uh, learn. But if at home, maybe not. <laughs> so, That's okay. But if, if I may say, sorry, one thing, but why do yes. you use YouTube, by the way? Okay. When I ask people, do you, you, do you watch TV or YouTube? People will say, I, I watch YouTube, right? Everybody watch YouTube here, right? But if I ask you more question, what are you watching in YouTube? Pasti by and job, TV programs. Is it correct? You also watch Indonesian Idol, right? Or American Got Talent, right? In YouTube, right? So why would you watch YouTube to watch TV programs? The answer is because they feel or we feel it is anywhere, anytime. If it's a TV program, you have to follow all the schedule, right? But in YouTube, you can do it anywhere, anytime. Ah, malas lah, nonton sekarang, nanti aja. So whenever you have time, whenever you, you have comfortable with, so lecture has to be like that, in my opinion. So if, it is, if your lecture is, is recorded, Pak Givari, for example, your student can watch it anywhere, anytime, when they got mood. That is what I meant by anywhere, anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Andy. And uh, it's still uh, another participant we will uh, deliver question to pa andi you can raise your hand maybe and directly on mic may i have a new question okay sure <laughs> yeah yeah because i work in the mechanical engineering so the uh, scale of the student can be created not only by theory, but they must do a practice. Now, now because the pandemic situation, so uh, lots of time not to do the practice. So the, the, uh, my question, do you agree if the children come to campus to do a practice to create the skill? Thank you. Oh, this is a really... Good question, and I think we, we are facing the same issue, but I'm also from Technic Geodesy. Uh, it's even worse, in my opinion, like because we have to go to the field and everything like that. Uh, as up to now, uh, we haven't got any solution about this, to be honest with you. We haven't got any solution about uh, practical activities uh, or practicum, we said it. So the closest thing that we are doing now, but the closest thing to that, that we are doing now is uh, to create video for them to understand the steps and the process and to ask them to do it and create video for uh, for their own and then we evaluate this video which i think is, is quite similar to what uh, you have been doing now but i agree with you but uh, and, and sorry the next thing is that to have a, a a very advanced simulation so, for example, uh, I'm, we are in, in Technic Geodesy, we are utilizing a, a, a device called Total Station. Total Station is to map, uh, you know, the, the surface of the earth. I think you, you probably know this, you know, uh, all students usually use this uh, camera-like uh, device in a tripod. It is not camera, it is uh, called Total Station. Uh, we, we, we cannot really touch it at the moment. What, what happens is that uh, we develop, not that we develop, but we try to find simulation, how students can actually uh, simulate close to reality the utilization of or the usage of this uh, total station. This is actually like the flight simulator. If you, I think you got my point, just yes. flight simulator. If you want to be a pilot, you really have to spend a lot of times uh, in the simulation room before you really touch the real uh, uh, plane. But once again, this is the closest thing to the reality. This is not the reality. This is called the virtual reality. That's why we call it virtual reality. So it will never replace but, uh, the, the real practicum, the touching the, the button of uh, device or whatever. So to be honest with you, I don't really have any solution as yet. But in my opinion, uh, once we embrace this new normal thing, then all the procedure will change. 
So I'm sure uh, in the future, uh, the way we do the practicum will be different. Uh, we might uh, touch less uh, physical object, in my opinion, uh, in order for us to uh, have the understanding. Or if now we think that uh, people working and touching something is a must because that is the reality of job, right? How about in the future, we don't really have human being anymore to operate a machine if we have robot. So it means that the uh, robot will not uh, uh, be affected by COVID-19. So this is, in my opinion, once again, a momentum for us to radically change the way we work in the future. Mohon maaf, ini mungkin kesannya, once again, it, it sounds like very utopist, but if, if the reality is like this and people cannot really go to the field, cannot really work, why would they need to be skillful if, if in the reality they don't really have to touch the machine because of the, the situation of, uh, of the pandemic, for example. So that's why people will try hard how to uh, create a new system or like the, the robotic system to work so that that's in that case, people do not really need to do a lot of job that requires skill and so on and so, on and so forth. So uh, that is my wild ideas anytime soon, but I think this is what uh, uh, my task is all about to uh, basically to disturb you or to disturb your mind with a naughty mind. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Andy. Uh, we have another question, Pak Andy, from uh, our lecturer, Ms. Andri. Uh, Pak Andy, is UJM ready to reserve international Easy. student? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, well, this is this is the reality. I have to, I have to be uh, frank and also uh, realistic here. Receipt as in physical, is a no. Why no? Even our students is not in campus at the moment, right, Mbak Andri? Even our own students are not in campus at the moment. So what would people say about us if we receive international students physically to our campus? It will generate another disaster, not only COVID-19 disaster, it's social disaster, right? Uh, so that's first. So, uh, but receiving as in online and any other method, it is a yes. So we have received, we have continuously received students from overseas for online, uh, uh, system online learning. So it is a yes and no. Yes, as in online, but no, as in physical. Not only about us, it also about our country. Sometimes uh, we force to receive, tapi kalau imigrasi bilang atau kemenlu bilang, no, we, we don't really receive uh, in terms of college yet, so can't do much about that. But it, it's a yes and it, it's a no. Thank you. Thank you, Pandi. Uh, I think our uh, question yeah. have been answered uh, properly by Pak Andi as our speaker in this session. And this is the end of session one. Thank you to Pak Andi for delivering the presentation very well and Thank answering you. all questions raised by our participants also very uh, well. I hope Pak Andi always inspire us. We wish you good health and success. See you next time, Andy. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Dear all participants, we will continue to the session two. I will invite an extraordinary moderator, a person <laughs> who is no. full of enthusiasm and always work hard. <laughs> He is a lecturer in the English study program. Ms. Andri Handayani will replace me as moderator for this session too. Ms. Andri, the, the stage Hello, is yours. Hello, Pagi. Could you hear my voice? Yes, very clear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for offer the top introduction. Yeah, actually, I'm not that <laughs> as good as what uh, I give uh, depicted. Yeah, but it's okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, participants. Welcome to the session two of uh, public 
lecture sociocultural changes during COVID-19 pandemic in higher education institutions, current condition and future trends. Yeah, as what introduced by uh, Pak Givari. My name is Andi Handayani from the English Study Program, Department of Languages, Arts and Culture Management. Vocational College Universitas Gajah Mada as your moderator for this session. In this session, we have two special speakers. Yeah, the first one is Professor Wang Chao Hui, or I often call her Professor Joyce from Chengdu Textile College, China. Good morning, Professor Joyce. Long time no see. Morning. Hello, Professor Joyce. Yes. Yeah, good morning. morning. This is Andre. Do you still remember yeah. me? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yes, yeah. I hope you are always uh, fine and healthy, Professor Wang. And then the second one is the Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Muhammad Hanafia from University Technology Mara, Malaysia. Good morning, Professor Hafiz. Yeah. Hello, Assalamualaikum Professor Hafiz. Morning. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's a pleasure to meet you today. Thank you very much for coming in uh, our public lecture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have two presenters for today, and then after the presentation, we'll have Q and A session. Yeah. So feel free to type your questions uh, in the chat box of our Zoom meeting, and also comments in YouTube. Okay. The first presentation will be delivered by Professor Wang Chao Hui, but before beginning, I would like to read her uh, bio data. Here, Professor uh, Wang Chao Hui is a professor of English and then uh, also chair in School of Foreign Languages in Chengdu Textile College, China. Also member of Advisory Committee of Foreign Language Teaching in Vocational Education, Ministry of Education in People's Republic of China. And then she is also Vice President of Supervisory Committee of ELT in Sichuan Province. And then she is also committee member of college. Her expertise includes uh, the uh, linguistic, yeah, and then also education and others. She uh, she teaches oral English for business correspondent English, uh, practical translation to business English majors and others. In 2015, she receives outstanding teacher in Sichuan province. And she is also author of many books and also in international journals. And then today, Professor Wang is going to present about reform and new birth of higher education during and after post-pandemic era in 20 minutes. Yeah, later. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Wang Chao Hui. Professor Wang? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah so we will help you. Here. Yeah, we will help you to share the slide. Yeah. Share the PPT. Okay. Okay, let me try. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But this time. So sorry. It's okay. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I can see it. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, please, mm -hmm. you may start, Professor Wang. So, morning, everyone. Uh, dear Professor, family members, right? I'm a little bit excited, really, uh, starting from the day I get the information that we can meet online, just because that kind of message reminded me three years ago when I stayed in UGM, which uh, was a very pleasant, pleasant and wonderful stay. Right. Thank you. And this morning, we'd like to talk about something about the uh, COVID-19 uh, according to the topic offered. So I'd like to say something, not, not a public speech, but also just a free talk, I think. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, how to say, reflections or a lot of experiences during this period of time, things next year or the end of next year, right? 
And first, I'd like to how to say recall what we experienced, and then what we feel, what we gain. And how about the future, right? So my topic is reform and new birth of higher education during and after post pandemic area. And we have three parts. Uh, firstly, I think uh, everybody knows that the wide, national wide lockdown, right, since January, every beginning of this year in China, and later on, is spread all over the country, all over the world. And just now, as Professor mentioned, we have to uh, face a lot of change. Everything, everything changed, right? Not only in our daily life, but also our work. And I'm so sorry to say that you are still you stay at home and offer lectures online. But in China here, we are uh, both teachers and students are, are back to school now. We are on campus now, right? <clears throat> and we can still how to say miss the pleasant uh, the, the pastime when we get together with our friends. But nowadays, we seldom go out. We we seldom dine out. So there's no more. Uh, full airplanes, um, just for me, example, uh, before maybe almost every weekend, I will take a flight on business trip, but this time, but this year, um, maybe I have only, how to say, six or five flights. So you can see, right, the, the, the limitation or the reduced uh, opportunities for uh, physical exchange, right? And also there's no more entertainment, no tea, tea house closed, coffee house closed, and the florist, every, every shop's closed, especially during the spring festival in China. But nowadays, uh, almost all the, all the shops reopen now, right? Especially in Chengdu, so you're welcome, right? And there is no more group tour, just because here in my department, we have uh, tourist measures, right? And judging from the information from the hotels or from the, uh, how to say, travel agency, we can say, um, situation is not so, is not as so good as we expected, especially in hotels and also tourists, uh, the group, right? The, the tour, tourist in, industry. And also in the office, uh, during the spring, the, the spring season, all of this, uh, most of the office were empty, right? Just because they just like all of us stay at home and work online. And there's no big parties, no birthday party and no weddings. A lot of friends, my friends, uh, how to say the, the kids cancel, cancel their wedding just because there's no gathering. And uh, how to say the most the, uh, the, the good point is that it's, we, we can drive smoothly. It's quite clean here. There's no traffic jam. Uh, you can see uh, here are some new things, new rules during and after the COVID-19. For example, in China, you know, we always sit around the table, especially around the hot board. We share the same hard board with, uh, without any serving chopsticks. But now we have to. It's a rule for the restaurant that you you have to offer two pairs of chopsticks for for your <clears throat> for, for the guests, right? And here another uh, picture suggests that we keep social distancing. Before here in Kating or restaurant, it always is always crowded. But now we keep distancing. Right, we keep this social distancing, right? So nowadays for for jobs, either for jobs or for our daily life, we think quite differently. And we are encouraged to, uh, how to say, to be always on alert or to, how to say, to keep social distance. That's the change, right? <clears throat> and just because as, we stay, we stay on campus, we are teachers. So we'd like to say something about the education, the impact of COVID-19 on education. There's no exception. There, there are two pictures. One is 
there's empty classrooms for the whole semester, right? Actually, we have spring festival starting from January, from the end of the, at the beginning of February this year, but throughout the whole spring, spring semester, we just stay online to keep contact with our students and our faculties and our colleagues. Only until June, the graduates come back to school just because they are coming back for their dissertation, writing, and working with their supervisors. So everything come back, uh, we almost come back to normal during June and July, right? <clears throat> and during that time, the schools, schools closed and the exam deferred and canceled. One, one thing I'd like to mention is about Chinese Gao Kao, the entrance examination here, uh, one month delay. There's one month delay. It was postponed for, for, an, uh, for a month later. And this, there's another case when we delayed Gao Kao in 2008. Can you still remember there's a very disastrous earthquake in Sichuan? And that earthquake caused the delay or postponement of Gao Kao, right? And also, um, just because teachers and students um, they couldn't they, they couldn't come back to campus, so we move everything move online, online shopping, online teaching, online chatting, everything. And at that time, we feel a lot, a lot, especially for the old generation, for the uh, uh, for for the teachers in their forties or fifties, they feel astonished. Or they feel embarrassed just because that's not so that that's not so familiar with the technicals or with the digital tools, right? We can say there's another picture which is very popular here in China. Uh, at the every beginning, nobody liked to uh, give offer lectures online, and also students uh, is uh, they're not so self-disciplined. Just because at that time, when in deep winter, even if at the every beginning of the spring, but the weather is quite cold. So they just want, they just stay in bed and keep warm. It's very difficult for us to, how to say, um, the, the attendance is a little bit depressing at every beginning just because they're not used to this kind of, this kind of mode. But later on, um, both teachers and students think it's okay, it's acceptable. And uh, there's no no lectures missed, and and teachers make good use of the resources, make good use of they share something and make their lectures more wonderful, colorful, and practical, and also online talking or conversation between teachers and students, or among the discussion among colleagues, uh, make them feel relieved, right? You know, at that time, especially some of some of us uh, feel a little bit, how to say, sorry, a little bit scared that we have little information about the virus itself and the every beginning, right? So at every beginning, they feel embarrassed and later on, they feel that it's okay, it's quite good, right? So in order to deal with the virtual, uh, virtual teaching, Right, <clears throat> we, ha we have done a lot of, we figure out different kind of measures. We take different kind of measures. First of all, we should uh, help the teachers to familiar with different e-platforms. They have to select a lot of variety of selections. For example, Tencent meeting, we have a Xuexitong platform, we have Smart, and we have Winner, a lot of uh, platforms, and we have a lot of apps. Uh, it takes time to, for us to adapt to or to familiar with this kind of things. So uh, we gather the, young, the younger generation or the younger group to give lectures, offer lectures, or give technical help to, the, to their faculties. In that case, they can familiar with this kind of situation. And also we have severe uh, super, supervisors group to keep the teaching going smoothly, right? You can say, and that time we are, it seems to me we are more exhausted on online teaching just because we have a lot of 
preparation, we have to adapt to the new environment or new situation. And also we, we have some worries, right? About the people around us, etc. Also, and for young, for the for those teachers who have who have two kids, they have they offer classes and the teacher have and the student and the kids have classes and at the same time, right? It's very difficult for, for them to handle. But when we recall these kind of things, we can't believe, right? We rarely handle this kind of thing, right? <clears throat> And also, teacher get well prepared. First of all, they 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 back to help gives them give the students some psychological help, right? Just because they have psychological barriers, they worry about their parents, they worry about their relatives who is far away, who who are far away from them, and they worry about their, themselves just because they know little about the uh, about the pandemic. So we do some survey, and also we build. We build the self confidence. Uh, we help the students with some passages, with some readings, and also on the other hand, we are busy with our course construction or course development online. Right. <clears throat> uh, that, that's the online teaching. Uh, one more thing I'd like to mention: we have some overseas or foreign teachers who come from how to say from American from England and also from Australia, right? But uh, during the break, we have winter break, some of them uh, went, went home, went back, and they can't get any a flight ticket to come back. And they feel doubted or feel hesitated whether they will come back to China or not at that time. So we ask their opinion whether they, they'd like to offer online classes, they accept it. They give us a very great help, right? And the students, teachers, and students. That, that's the um, mm, our foreign our foreign teacher from American. They he offer courses online and their home country, right? And also we have a lot of preparations. Just because we have we have no in class in class instructions, we worry about whether the students can follow us. So we get task list. We get assignment, we sorted our, our resources. We, we have done a lot, a lot of work. And also we download different kind of resources for different subjects. And uh, at that time, the students are eager to come back to campus. So they always ask the question, when can we come back? When can we come back to campus? And both, even if before the teachers complain about their overload, overwork load, they have strong desire to come back to school just because they stay too long, single-handed, alone, right, at that time. And also, uh, at that time, that's the first time we work together. Uh, we share the uh, resources just because for the same class, we have different teachers, we are in the same group. We're all, all of us on Tencent meeting, or we have virtual meeting, virtual faculty meetings, discuss the topic and how to comfort our students or how to make the learning more meaningful to deal, to deal with the reality. So we select some piece of writing such as uh, Samuel, Science. We want to encourage them, want to, uh, uh, how to say, Recall them to make use of time, even if they stay at home. They're not free from classes, but uh, the youngs, it's not the, uh, how to say, it's not a matter of age, but a matter of state, right? And also, we know the charity events, musical events, they help the students know more things about what the people around us in the world do and how can they do their contribution, how to, um, how to make themselves, uh, how to learn, study hard, and how to achieve more. And in that case, you can contribute more to the world, to, the, uh, to fight against the COVID-19, right? And we have different kind of form, variety of forms of uh, learning materials. 
video vlog, and also music, and readings, and some PPT, the creativity by our teachers themselves, right? That's the examples. And also, we want to not only teach the students, we want to educate the students, you know, especially in Wuhan at that time, a lot of women nurse, nurses and doctors, um, they, how to say, they go to, they went to Wuhan to offer a very, to offer help to the patients at that time. And we have a lot of moving and touching stories and help that the students can share the burden and be responsible for the future to be ready for the future. So we have a lot of touching stories and not only teaching, but also with like to the, the really educated, they get some morality uh, thinking, right? Moral thinking about that. For example, here in China, we have a lot of a lot of stories about the heroes. They cut their they cut their hair just because it's more convenient for the medical for their medical help. And also the young guys who light the night every uh, every night in Wuhan in Wuhan Bridge. In that case, to keep the night to keep the hope to the whole city, right? And also during the COVID-19, there's the fire, uh, there's a blaze in Xichang and uh, almost 13 soldiers, no, so 13 local persons lost their life just because they want to, <clears throat> they, they, how to say, they help to uh, extinguish the fire, right? And also we want to share the slogan of the, uh, uh, Tokyo 2020, uh, united by emotion. They hope the students, they will stay in a community and be helpful with each other, right? So that's the uh, education. And also students before are not so accustomed to digital tools. Our, our teachers try different ones and also give them some recommendations such as Tate and China Daily, and also Dublin, right? And uh, Do Lin Guo, I think uh, quite popular also among your students. And from then on, I think they make good use of this kind of tools after class, right? And the students enhance their information literacy now, right? And also we have some um, joint efforts. Uh, we have a lot of project based uh, project based projects from across the, uh, how to say, the joint worker. We, uh, our students from English department uh, write, uh, do some written work, and the people from art school do the uh, draw the paintings, right? That's the public, uh, that, that's the poster, right? That's the poster. This one, the shooter, uh, how to say, a solution to the to the to the heroes, and they ask the student, ask the people to stay away from the white light, right? To protect the environment, right? They are very interested in doing these kind of things, and also they really communicate. They they communicate smoothly online in groups, right? In that case, students think that not so uh, life is not so dull, right? <clears throat> so. From the, this period of virtual teaching, we gained something. First of all, the, as for the resources, we build resources, we develop sources together with our colleagues, with students even sometimes, and we also share. And also we get some help from publishing houses uh, for free and a lot of descriptions, online resources. And also for online courses, we, we create some micro courses systematically try, we are trying, we are on the way. And also as for tasks, we have a uh, discussion, man mapping, multi-project for different kind of, for students from different levels. And as for assessment, we also, the emphasis on assessment or evaluation, just because it's very difficult to assess whether the learning or teaching is effective or not, right? That's still puzzled us, right? Uh, especially in terms of education, right? Just because we have a long way to go. 
And as for students, they get some authentic materials, especially for English majors. They, uh, their language improves a lot. And they show much concern about the society, show much concern about their labors, about their groups, and they, they increase their social particip participation. They do some volunteer jobs online. I think that's good. That's good education. And also from the process, I think we are not teaching them to learn, learn to know, but also learn to do, learn to be, and learn to live together with the people around them. And also to be a really help, to really give a hand for the parents or for the people who is in bad lead. And also they have a strong sense of community, a sense of responsibility you now, I think. For example, nowadays, uh, before for the graduates, they would like to stay at home or they, they would like to enjoy the gap year. But now they're very active to uh, job searching, right? So they're more responsible now. But we also have some puzzles during that time. For example, how to establish systematic education resources. Just because that's the, all of a sudden, they have no any preparations, even for teachers. Even if we made some macro courses, for example, we have some introduction for the literature, we have some introduction for, for the writers and for the uh, science and technology, and also about the hard days, hard days, but not systematic. Maybe for this class for today, the students have some uh, something to preview. But later on, just because we, we are short of this kind of materials, uh, the students, uh, we, we, ha we haven't, we can't offer them more materials, right? So how to establish systematic education resources is a problem. And also materials, you know, uh, today it's a little bit difficult for me to be, uh, be at the Zoom meeting just because, you know, Wi-Fi problem uh, not, not only Wi-Fi from there's some limitation here in China, you know, right? Uh, it's not it's not always accessed uh, accessible, uh, especially for foreign websites sometimes, right? For example, here in China we can't uh, they're not so easy, right? So materials um, directly from teachers or from their students, we encourage students to make some vlog, right? to make some resources by themselves or download something as they like. If they come across problem, they can come online or come to the classroom to or share or to discuss with their, with their teachers. And also another puzzle is how to, how to arrange, your, uh, arrange your classroom activity, keep your teaching attractive or keep the students uh, focused, focused all the time. That's a problem, I think. And also it's time consuming, especially online course design, right? How to, uh, how to say, how to offer the same content but design the different tasks for different students from different levels. That's a problem for me and for my colleagues. And also for teachers role, um, traditionally here in China, teachers, in most cases, it will dominate the class. The dominators, they're always, is, they are afraid that they have not enough time to offer the knowledge, right? Prescribed on the textbook. But now, I think you're not the, you're not dominator how to help your students, how to stimulate, how to motivate, how to guide. That's the, that's the role of the teacher. And how to monitor your class, how to manage the learning process and also ensure interaction and also how to, especially for those people who live remote in remote area, we just post them some emails, right? Not online. <clears throat> and also we have over, we are overloaded for teachers, especially. They have a lot of scaffolding activities. They have to um, figure out the different activities, classroom activities or online activities to catch the students' involvement. And they have to familiar themselves with digital tools. You know, if you have series of apps or tools, 
and I, we have to develop our de develop our resources just because the world is changing continuously, right? And also ourselves, we need pro professional uh, our pr teachers' professional development, how to enhance our digital literacy, and how to stay update, right? We need more time and the Wi-Fi accessibility and the sufficient scaffoldings and the, the balance between knowledge and ability and also the learning very best and the demand from the society and also how to offer your colleagues or you offer your colleagues or factors exemplary courses, right? It's time consuming and energy energy consuming, especially for the uh, management, right? And how to keep the consistency in both teachings, learning, and management. I think that's I think that's the key point. The con consistency, how to match your ma match your assessment evaluation with your teachings, or how to match your teaching with your assessment evaluation, right? And also the community of the shared future, just like today we share with each other about our experiences, right? And another I'd like to say some, something about my expectations or uh, a predicate about the chain. I think blending, we can't go back to traditional, we can't, can't go back to the traditional in-class, uh, how to say, in-person classroom instructions, right? There is a blending. We, we have to face, we have to be faced with the blended mode of teaching, how to integrate online with tradition, right? That not revolution, but evolution, I think. We shouldn't give it up, give up the old, the old ones, right? We should, based on the old ones, make, make improvement, right? And also the transformation, how to adapt to the transformation to the digital world and how to make improvements. And sometimes how to keep balance between the independent and the collaborative learning and teaching, right? As for teachers, I think uh, from this, uh, through, through the experiences in the past several months, I think I really believe that if you give your students a fish, you just feed him a day. And if you give him a way to fish, you feed him the whole knife, right? So not only teach, you should inspire them, motivate them. Uh, the, the teachers, uh, you should not only do some professional development or academic development, but also you should know something about this. Uh, so you have some knowledge about technology and pedagogic knowledge. And our emphasis should, uh, should be on, on discovery and hopefully the students with their eyes, with, with the ears, they can get some fresh ideas every day, right? And also you can, you are so smart to in, engage, to encourage the interaction, just be, especially for language learners, no interaction, I think, no expectation that they can use the language very smoothly. And also they have a lot of construct, construction work. For example, a well-planned lesson, or how to meet the peak demands for digital resources. That's the current, that's the, um, that's what we should do in the postal area, area, right? And also we should transform. Generally, we have, we have three steps in class, presentation, practice, and production. But I think the more important thing is preparation for both teachers and students. You have, it's, Yes, I'm sure it's time, it takes some time, but it's necessary, it's quite necessary. It's must for both teachers and students to get prepared to the world, to the, to the classes and to their career. And also we should, uh, we should, we can be relieved only if we are aware of the progress for both teachers and students. So we should concern not only the process, but both process and the result. Only if the learning is effective, both teachers and students can be reflected, re relieved, and they can adapt to adjust to the new env environment, I think, right?
Wang, Prof Wang, I'm sorry, your time is running out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The last yeah. one. Okay. And Thank also, you. we we have to um, try to make our teaching con teaching contents colorful, right? Uh, for example, to deal with the new how to say um, the the new the new jobs, right? Such as uh, internet plus teaching such as epidemic prevention and public health care, et cetera, right? So we should uh, renew or update. And we have classroom learning, not only keep silence, but also debate. And also we should emphasize to the autonomous learning just because the students, both teachers and students should, uh, should uh, cultivate lifelong learning, lifelong learning ability and as assist assessment, Visual assessment for learning, of learning, but also as learning, right? I think. So we have no time. I can't. I can't explain it. Um, and last, I like to recall my happy days in Indonesia and that time three years ago, right? Thank you for your homes. Thank you for for your kindness. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, Prof Wang. Yeah. Thank you for your comprehensive uh, presentation about the current condition in China and then uh, the way the teachers uh, teach and then how a student perceive that. But uh, for the participants, you can ask uh, uh, Prof Wang after the second presenter. Yeah, we have Q&A session after the second presenter. Uh, Prof Wang, please wait for a moment. We proceed to the second presentation. Sure. Thank you very much okay. once again. The second uh, speaker for this session is Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Hafiz, Muhammad Hanafia from Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management, University Technology Mara, Malaysia. Good morning, Professor Hafiz. Yeah, it's again, it's a pleasure to meet you. Before presenting, I would like to read the, his CV. Dr. Hafiz is Deputy Dean of Research and Industry Linkage, Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management. And then uh, he completed uh, his study, PhD program in Hospitality and Tourism Management in UITM Mara. His research area covers tourism management, economics, and research methods and statistics. He becomes the editorial board and also reviewer in many international Scopus indexed journals. And then he is also the author of many books and he receives many grants. He is also received certified hotel industry analytics from American uh, Hotel and Lodging Educational Institute. And uh, he has been doing many consultation works, including from Ministry of Tourism and Culture Malaysia. Today, Professor Hafiz wants to share about sociocultural changes during COVID-19 pandemic in University Technology Mara, Malaysia, current conditions and innovations in the next 20 minutes. All right, without further ado, please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Muhammad Hanafia. Please, time is yours, Professor Hafiz. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam MC. Um, Hi everyone, uh, thank you for your generous introductions about myself and personally I would like to thank uh, Mr. Gifari for his, um, especially on the invitation and also assistance for such a very interesting uh, topic, especially by our previous uh, speakers. Well, um, I mean, I mean the, the introduction was quite meticulous and thorough. So, so um, just again, uh, actually my background is uh, in economics, economics. Uh, but then I was um, uh, attached with the Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management, UITM. And in order to understand better uh, in, within the tourism industries, I did my PhD in Hospitality and Tourism Management. And uh, this is my, my university. I mean, UITM is actually one of the biggest uh, university in Malaysia. We have 
around 150,000 students. We have 30 plus campuses around Malaysia. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the new campus in Selangor, which is like uh, 50 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur International Airport and around 30 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur City Centre. Um, and I uh, have uh, six campuses that are offering uh, hotel and tourism courses in Malaysia. So we have in Terengganu, Penang, Melaka, Selangor, Sarawak and Sabah. Okay, I'm going to go straight to the, the, the topic of uh, this sharing sessions. I'm going to share our practices in University of Rajimara, especially the Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management. What are the changes that we did or we have to adopt during COVID-19 pandemic? Yep. And um, again, I think, um, sorry, let me, yep, okay. So, um, well, I believe that everyone can agree with me that COVID-19 is a catastrophe. Yep. I mean, not only talking about the industry itself, I mean, the economic uh, activities, the tourism industries is considered as the, I mean, I mean the, the, the worst uh, uh, industry that been affected. We are the first one being hit by COVID-19 and UNWTO predicted that the tourism industries will be the last one who will recover. Yep. And uh, when we talk about the education uh, setting, um, many argues or many highlights the issues on how the students are responding to the coronavirus crisis. And when we talk about the students, how the university's management are responding to the crisis. But rarely people talk about the lecturers. I mean, we as the instructors, as the lecturers, Dawson, were also affected by COVID-19 personally and also as a, uh, educators ourselves. But then I would like to uh, recap what UN, UNWTO been. Uh, UNWTO is the United Nations of Tourism World Organizations. Uh, Propose that whenever we have, we face with a crisis, we need to be we need to respond yeah we need to respond accordingly there are short-term response and long-term response and in order to do that we have to identify what are the responses in order for us to wait when things will be things are recovering and during the, the recovery what are the things that we learn from the crisis in order for us to be resilient and technology mara yeah for classes to open and distance learning ODL most effective April 30, 2020 until 2021 for all its campuses nationwide. I mean, um, there are a lot of, uh, I would say, arguments on whether we should focus on uh, online classes or we should we say physical classes, but then because of this COVID-19 and with the answer in terms of the government's uh, regulations, Therefore, we believe that it is best um, for the students and for the lecturers to continue the learning process, but through ODL. And um, what, when we talk about ODL, this is tot actually totally different with, it, with uh, uh, online learning because we have blended uh, asynchronous, uh, which is uh, without real-time interaction, and also synchronous real-time interaction online learning. You know, the reason why we, 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 we use ODL or Open Digital Learning is because we want to combine innovative learning and teaching techniques. Yep, combine this uh, innovative learning and teaching techniques completely online, but with flexibility of studying from anywhere at any time over the internet. Meaning that right now, the brick and mortar uh, timetable is not applicable. The brick and mortar timetable, I mean, the students' uh, classes timetables, are for the sake of uh, their guidance on, I mean, to ensure that there is no clashes between the classes, but the the learning process can happen throughout the day, even during the weekend. So, I mean, that is actually a lot of pressure uh, put upon the students and in fact, also to the lecturers. Um, so, ODL is talking about anytime, any place and anywhere. 
And uh, before we start with the uh, ODL, we 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 did we did plan on that particular matter. We recognize the ODL mechanism. We we know that uh, it's not easy for us, uh, for the lecturers and for students who are not well exposed uh, to the uh, online learning platforms. And in fact, for UTM, uh, UITM, sorry, um, most of our students are from rural area, which have limited uh, internet connection. Uh, these are all the, the, the attributes that we take into consideration before planning the ODL. We also assess the ODL readiness between within our students and also our lecturers. We have to modify the syllabus to make sure that um, uh, it is attainable and also to uh, we have to change the rubrics because at the end of the day, even though it's ODL, we still have to uh, handle or take care of our quality of our PNP, Pengajaran and Pembelajaran. And after all this uh, process, we have to communicate the ODL mechanism. We communicate to our students, we communicate it with our uh, top management universities in the university and also our college qualifications agencies uh, to ensure that our program uh, does not uh, violate any of their standards. And uh, we, during the implementation stage, we uh, have a, a set of team that uh, focus on supervising the ODL delivery moods and stuff. So, you know, uh, the, uh, the lecturers have to report uh, their activities. Uh, we use a lot of online platforms such as uh, Google Forms for attendance. Um, and uh, we also, uh, uh, the, 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 the academic department uh, governs the ODL standards. We want to make sure that the students are receiving similar, uh, uh, we say, similar teaching styles, yeah, and also informations, uh, materials, uh, as uh, as and we have a lot of campuses. So we want to make sure that the, all the campuses are using similar standards, and we appraise the ODL process. Uh, we we ask the students to read the lab lecturers and we ask the lecturers to rate the students uh, effort in ODL states. This is during March and April 2020 and after the first uh, ODL we focus on the outcome. So we assess the effectiveness of ODL, we explore the ODL usage and acceptance. We want to know and we found out a lot of uh, interesting info, uh, inputs for us to improve and definitely this is our second semester. Uh, what we call it ODLing, yeah, and uh, we have to change based on the uh, ODL expectation and satisfaction. And again, because we have time uh, during this semester break, we amplify our ODL training. Yeah, we did a lot of uh, sharing session between uh, uh, the student lecturers. Yeah, I mean they they came in and they share their point of view, their best practice on how they uh, teach uh, via ODL and somehow this is actually an eye-opener uh, session because we found out there's a lot of creativity uh, uh, among our lecturers and uh, I mean we are adopting uh, to their ways of teaching and in fact it enhances uh, the quality of our uh, uh, teaching and learning. Okay, uh, and you're talking about ODL activities. Yep, um, I believe that the same at UG, uh, UG, UGM. Uh, we have synchronized online learning in which we have online classes. And in fact, we have uh, these uh, um, postgraduate activities, which we also conducted our proposal defense and Viva Voce online until today. So uh, most of the our PhD students, uh, even though they are, uh, I mean they are international students who are, who are in their own countries, they are able to continue or further their studies uh, via online learning. And uh, we also have the asynchronous, uh, asynchronous online learning, which we use MOOC. Uh, we are very lucky that the university have uh, an established platform of MOOC. Uh, and we also a lot do a lot of YouTube lectures. I mean lectures mean the lecturers recorded their lectures online and they share it to 
uh, the students. We have a lot of, uh, and these practical classes have to uh, be done. For, uh, for kitchen classes, what we did is special semester, we call it summer class, in which when uh, uh, we separated them into a few groups to and also invite them back to the campus to do their uh, kitchen classes. Yeah, but with uh, so, uh, the SOP and social distancing. So the problem is that we have to separate this class into two or three different groups. Yeah. So, uh, I would say this uh, serving classes, yeah, butler classes. Uh, we we share the the, the recorded uh, film uh, through YouTube platform, and uh, it it will be uh, it will be also shared uh, using our university platform, in which the students can give comments and uh, and open and also do some open discussions. And uh, we also have internship uh, program in which most of our students will do their internships uh, activities uh, during the final year. Uh, there are options for them to proceed with internship as usual, either physically or via online. So uh, we we still have students right now, by uh, uh, working with uh, or practicing uh, or, or in, uh, doing their internship with. Uh, hotels, restaurants, and also travel agents. But we also have issues with uh, hotels that have been closing down, therefore, uh, or they, uh, they they are during within the, the red zones, and so they have to stop uh, for two weeks or three weeks. So we proceed with the internship with the delay of commencement date. So somehow um, they they have to undergo the internship a bit a bit more longer. But then uh, the universities agreed to delay their commencement date and we offer internship, but we also offer them alternative projects such as research assistant, yeah, working as our intern in our office on management side. So, I mean, everybody are trying to be creative and to ensure that the students are able to graduate on time and uh, with on time, they also process uh, qualities that will uh, enhance their possibility to get uh, employed uh, in the future. So, uh, besides the uh, brick and mortar classes, we also have we also do student soft skills training, uh, online industry engagement. We invited uh, our our alumni, we invited industry uh, player to give talks, and we did a lot of workshops uh, with our industry partner and strategic partner. Uh, we also do did a lot of staff training. Yeah, uh, most of us are, uh, were were asked to give a lot of lectures on uh, publications, on uh, risk uh, upskilling and reskilling. Yeah, uh, and most of it to give talks to other organizations and uh, higher education institutions. And uh, when you talk about ODL challenges, these are the things that we found first. We are talk, talking about issues of technology readiness. I mean, not all of our students are ready. Our, I mean, in terms of technology readiness, we have issues with our lecturers and um, what seniors lecturers. I mean, they are not uh, ready with uh, technology, but then yeah, things have changed. And uh, it's either you adopt or adapt, uh, but uh, change is imminent right now. And we also have issues on uh, yeah, most of our lecturers are not well trained to produce online resources. This this is something that uh, is global uh, issues in which, um, uh, again, they keep on asking our lecturers to learn and relearn. And these uh, guidelines and steps are available online via YouTube. So I can see a lot of young and senior lecturers who are converting uh, their resources, yeah, their commercial resources, into online one. And another thing is that online teaching actually takes more time from face-to-face -face teaching. Yeah, I agree. So therefore, there's a lot of uh, asynchronous and synchronous teaching, meaning that the student uh, uh, may learn uh, your subjects during weekend, and they might ask questions during weekend. But then, yeah, uh, uh, as, per, uh, as per agreed, we have to uh, attend to their requests, attend to their uh, questions, even during weekends. Um, so, 
what we did here, the best practice is you need uh, for universities to, to survive during COVID-19, you need to ensure that you assess the effectiveness of the app, of this ODL or online learning, yeah, uh, through the, uh, the point of view of students and lecturers. You need to explore the ODL usage and acceptance. You need to uh, survey or research on the ODL expectation and satisfaction. And again, you need to amplify your ODL training. I mean, it should be one of your main uh, activities uh, during uh, ODL in, in order to ensure that the university's uh, activities will go on, the learning process is ongoing, uh, and our, our lecturers are well adapt with uh, the new uh, technology. And uh, in terms of the faculty efforts, uh, we conducted the uh, ODL accordingly to the student's timetable to avoid overlapping. Yeah? And we uh, identify students with good action. We utilize our, I mean, we didn't, uh, I mean, the universities are not too rigid. It's up to them. As long as the learning process is happening, they are happy with that. And uh, for students with poor internet connection, uh, this is something that's quite tough. Uh, there are uh, evidences or uh, experience by our lecturers that they send the materials to emails or even uh, using WhatsApp and Telegram apps. Yeah, uh, this is for, for only for students with uh, low data application. And um, for uh, classes that have students with this uh, limited internet connection, the synchronous session when online classes will help in moderation in ensure that the student limitation express, express focusing on those with poor internet speeds. So we have cases that uh, the uh, the students' material was sent using uh, conventional mail. Yeah, this is for uh, students who are staying in remote area in the Borneo in Sabah and Sarawak. So, but then uh, what we did is that right now for this semesters we um, we did a survey on uh, with, with the students uh, on whether they would like to uh, stay at the campus. For, OD, for ODL, meaning that they come to the campus, they stay at the colleges. There is no face-to-face uh, -face classes, it's online, but they are using the university's infrastructures as the classes, using the Wi-Fi uh, for all in our campuses. Uh, and uh, they were governed in terms of uh, SOP and also social distancing. Um, besides that, uh, I, I think, uh, the, the most important thing right now that we learn is that uh, not all students are the same. Everybody have uh, advantages and disadvantages in terms of this ODL and COVID-19. Therefore, uh, it is our aim to ensure that the learning process is still happening. Uh, everybody are receiving the, a similar or uh, the same education quality, uh, regardless whether they have a good internet connection or not. Uh, in terms of conclusion, uh, because the Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management is, uh, is considered as a TVET based uh, faculty, we have a lot of pract uh, practical classes uh, and we are very uh, close with our industries. Therefore, uh, our, uh, we did a lot of, uh, I mean, we, we enhanced, we tried to maintain our relationship with our industrial partner because Without them, our students are unable to do their practical training. And with, without that uh, practical training, they can't graduate um, yeah, with the course and program learning outcome. We need to be flexible. The students can achieve the program learning outcome. The you can try to play around with the syllabus. I mean, it doesn't mean that they have to attend the physical classes. Uh, and uh, without the physical classes, they can learn. They can learn. A lot from the online uh, say um, uh, facilities yeah, yeah, we have. We need to be very clear and transparent. Uh, we need to have a clear and transparent communication to the students. I mean, communication must come from one sources. Um, I mean, and uh, we need to have some sort of alternative assessment and grading scheme. Yeah, uh, for last year, most of our sources doesn't have any final examinations but we change it into final assessment. We give them uh, extra uh, assignment uh, and 
we 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 focus more on the key studies uh, based uh, assignment uh, for them to be able to relate what is the, what what they learn in the classes and also what's happening in the real world. Yep, we need to have adequate resources to support the delivery of alternative assessment. Yeah, this is where actually uh, I believe uh, a blessing in disguise for UITM. Right now, I can I can happily say that or claim that uh, most of our lectures uh, is visible online. Uh, they they uh, they have online materials available with them. Uh, which actually helping our MOOC program, MOOC program. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, because of having these online um, uh, say resources, they are able to make sure that uh, ensure their, their MOOC is uh, much uh, rich with uh, resources. And again, the new normal open doors to new possibilities. I, again, I want to recap what you end up with your tell. And again, uh, we keep on uh, learn and relearn uh, for the lecturers. Uh, open uh, yourself for changes uh, that adopt new technologies because uh, COVID-19 uh, is here for a few more years. Um, I think that's all for okay, my Okay, wow. Thank you very much for your presentation, uh, Professor Hafiz. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, now I would like her uh, to ask questions. Yeah, both to uh, Professor Wang and also Professor Hafiz. Here we have uh, uh, who wants to ask question. Maybe I would like to invite Bu Endang to directly ask to the speaker. Endang, please open your microphone. Sorry, I forgot. Thank you, Ms. Andy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great to meet you here, mm -hmm. Professor Wang. Even though this is very much happy to be able to see you and talk to you and listen to you. Also to Professor Hafiz, uh, it's really great to get to know you. We have never been uh, really meeting in person, but uh, okay. it's really great to see you today. And I'm very happy to listen to your presentation. We we'll really learned a lot. Um, uh, okay. I actually would like to ask these questions to both, to Professor Wang Zhaohui, also to Professor Hafiz. It's about the subjects that we need to teach to the students. And the subject requires the students to, just like in the case of your class, Professor Hafiz, the students learn to cook in the kitchen. How do you teach them really uh, during this kind of pandemic that the students cannot truly come to your campus? Um, how do you do it? And also to Professor Wang, the same question actually. How do we do it in Chengdu Textile College when it comes to the subject that students really need to learn the skills? Then how do we train them? How do we monitor? How do we give them assistance? That so far that would be a problem for us here through uh, YouTube, we try to make like videos. We try to show them how to do this, but the students can really come to the, our campus at the moment. So um, probably the students would do it um, in their own house, in their own dormitory. How do we uh, monitor? How do we uh, guide them to do it correctly? So my question, Ms. Andri, is to both speakers, Professor Wang Zhaohui. Yes and also to Professor Hafiz. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, we end up for your questions. Maybe I would like to invite Professor Wang first to answer the question. Yeah, and then after that, Professor Hafiz, yeah. Okay, can you hear me, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Good, it's ended, right? And for your question, about the how how to make this thing about what kind of courses we we would like to offer to the students, especially to majors. Uh, we have a lot of puzzles before. First of all, I think we keep uh, we establish relationship with different enter or associations and also some companies which is relevant to our major to our majors. For example, we have business English and tourism English. We have good relationship uh, with the five-star hotels here in, uh, in the local in Chengdu. 
and also still in Guangdong, in other provinces, even in Beijing, uh, they have a lot of opportunities. They have a lot of friends. They keep in touch. That's the first step the relationship. And also, they also communicate with, with each other, especially we have a discussion when we uh, make the saying our syllabus for each year for the freshmen. We have a meeting. We have a panel meeting. We will invite the, the expert or take uh, the expert or HR, HR of the company to come to our campus and we have a discussion. For example, in this year for the 2020 students, they give us, they offer us some suggestion for the business people, for the business majors, just because, uh, mm, how to say, the physical, the shopping mall, for example, a lot of shops close down and and all the things move on to the line. So they help us to cancel the, um, to cancel some classes as, uh, how to say, negotiation, business negotiation, and also, uh, what else? Uh, they, they give us suggestion to have more courses on e-commerce. E and also they offer us opportunities when we have some, when we have some exhibitions or some big set, big settings, right? They will offer the opportunity, especially for business English majors. The translation company also sometimes when they do some translation, especially the local culture, for example, here in Pixian, Pixian Bing Gems, right? They will invite our students to do some, to follow, to do, uh, to work as the research assistant. And the students can learn a lot. And also, what else? We will invite them to come to the class and offer lectures just because they have experience, they know more about the industry. And for the, for the tourist majors, we, we will invite, every year we have five star tourist guide here in our province. They have this kind of activities and we will invite these uh, excellent people come to our classroom, right? And give lectures to the students. And even they have online courses with our students, especially nowadays, just because we move on virtual. Nowadays, we invite the, how to say, the top, the top 15 enterprises uh, give the lectures, their, their HR or their expertise to give the lectures online for the whole, for the whole term, right? For example, in, on Tuesday afternoon, students are free. It's flexible for us to arrange these kind of activities, right? And also we have a lot of corporations. For example, they offer a lot of opportunities for the uh, volunteering jobs. Right during the three years for their uh, for their major pursuit, right? So ours just because we're in the center of the city, right? They have a lot of opportunities, but this time uh, we we come with some difficulties just because uh, chances are slim now, you know. But just because we we are we have close we have tight or close relationship, they'd like to offer some opportunities for for our students, right? So that's a cooperation. Really, we have school enterprise majors is sitting up here in China and also in my in my college. There are a lot of majors between uh, enterprises and, and college. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Wang, for your answer. So like the collaboration between industrial uh, sectors and also university is very important. Okay, uh, I would like to invite Professor Hafiz to also answer the uh, question from Bu Endang. Okay, uh, I think my answer will be quite short. Um, we need to understand that this is a pandemic. Yeah, uh, we can treat um, our students uh, and the learning, uh, the teaching and learning process similar with what we have before. First of all, we need to inform the students that the way we teach, 
the way they learn will be totally different. And we are using what we have right now for the sake of teaching and learning. Uh, again, we need to be creative. I mean, for UITM, I'm going to share about what we, we did with UITM. Yeah, I agree. I mean, in terms of teaching lab, you, you are teaching cooking uh, classes using videos. It is actually quite similar with what you have in in your uh, national TVs. I mean, a chef teaching how to cook, but the experience is totally different. Yeah, because uh, the reason why we have lab classes because we want them to do hands-ons, and the issue is that each of them uh, have uh, are, are having different environment. If they're doing they're doing their cooking in their house because they have different equipment and uh, environment and we are not yet talking about uh, people who are staying in rural area who doesn't have uh, adequate equipment in their house so for the faculty of hotel what we did is that first we did the online classes but we identify certain not not the subject but certain topic in the syllabus that needed to be done in physical classes. So we did a, a working paper to the uh, vice chancellors uh, for special project, I mean special classes. Uh, also sending a letter to the our Majlis Keselamatan Negara, our uh, national security uh, uh, we say bodies, requesting them to allow the movement of these students back to the faculty for one month we did a, a, a we say we call it a, a physical classes adhering to the sop and the social distancing because we need to understand that without such classes the quality of the students that we are going to graduate who are going it will be lesser than uh, the, the their seniors in which would adhere uh, would hinder them to get jobs yeah, uh, and the second thing is that uh, what we did, what we plan is that for all our students who are graduating during COVID nineteen, we are going to offer them short class, short term classes or short term courses after the pandemic. Yeah, so it's a, it's a free courses just to uh, replace what they are missing in their uh, in their uh, COVID nineteen classes. So uh, I think this is where uh, the creativity of the instructor with the support by the organizations. Uh, there is a need to, the organization to need to support such, uh, we say, uh, possibilities. Um, we, 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 we've seen that some, some, uh, somehow in the, our early stage, the top management doesn't understand why you need to have uh, physical classes. But after proper explanation, and after uh, using evidences from other universities, yeah, we did uh, a survey on Taylor's universities in Malaysia, MSU universities, who are top universities in terms of uh, uh, hospitality and tourism. So we proposed that. And Alhamdulillah, last semester, we did a short one-month classes only for practical classes, for hotel students, for culinary students, and for food service students. Yeah. Um, Again, um, to cut short, we need to tell the students that things change. This will be different environment. And we need, we also as an instructor and as the organization need to understand that we need to deliver such uh, promises that we promise the students in a different way. And if you think that it is not enough, therefore you need to think. Uh, you need to identify what are the ways of enhancing the students' understanding, ensuring that each of them receive the same knowledge, the same experience in learning of such product or such subjects. So that is my two cents on that matter. I hope I, I explain it properly to uh, Bu Endang. Eh? Thank you. That's yeah. very clear. Yes, thank you, Professor Hamis. Thank you, Professor Hafiz, for your answers. Okay, the next one, we still have a question from Andre Bukit Vista. Maybe, Mr. Andre, do you want to open your microphone to directly ask to Professor Wang? Uh, yes, thank you, Bu Andre. Actually, first of all, sorry, I was using uh, my office Zoom because it's error on my personal one. 
So it's okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, I am here, Andre. Uh, I want to ask to Professor Wang Jiahui. Actually, uh, the question is: I I love your explanation about the problem and puzzles there. You mentioned about teachers' role, teachers' workload, and such. And I think uh, this is I was I was coming uh, from the student. Uh, perspective over here. So actually, I want to ask about how can uh, uh, we motivate ourselves first, because uh, this is the things that we need to came from the both side. Uh, the student motivate themselves, but the teacher also motivate the student itself. But I want to ask, especially for tourist majors, I asked, I asked them to try to get the video or get the video or how to say text about the different scenic sports and the change of the tourism industry, reading, and also do some research about the academic papers. In that case, make yourself be sensitive about the development, about the, about the direction of the industry first. And also for both teachers and students here in our campus, on our campus, for, for teachers, we try to offer them opportunity and we try to get get some opportunity from the enterprises. Uh, hopefully that the teachers in this, for this, uh, for the certain subject or the call, the call courses, call and courses, they are required to go to the uh, hotels, to go to the companies, it's a must if they want to get some promotion, right? For example, nowadays, if you work three, three days, uh, three years here in, uh, in a college, you, you are required to go to the company by yourself or maybe your department will give you, give you some support. In that case, they can make their, they can design their courses more authentic, more uh, useful. They can, the students can apply what they learn, right, to practice. That's for teachers and on the part of the students here, just now I told you, even if, uh, we have some negative reports or not so not not so not so good as as is the tourist industry is not good as good as before but they have other chances for example we have field trip we have exhibition auditions here in Chengdu international so that's a good chance for language learners so we encourage and motivate the students to try to work as a volunteer Right, to get ready. If you keep on being volunteer, if you're willing, your willingness of being volunteer can equip you well for the ever-changing society, I think. And what else? Uh, I, I also think um, you should, uh, the students, both students and uh, teachers should keep, uh, keep in touch with the graduates. Right, they can give you the response or they can give you some information or the, the real case of the current situation of the industry. So to be more communicative, informative, and also try to put what you've learned from classes into um, real tasks. I think that's my suggestion. And also we will try to get some uh, VR courses uh, and try to, uh, how to say, um, nowadays you can go online, for example, even if you have no opportunity to do practice, to do inter, you can make good use of the online resources and do some imitation, I think. That's the, that's the way we deal with the COVID impact now, right? You okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your answer, Prof. Wang. Uh, all participants, please give applause for both uh, Prof. delivering very uh, great presentations. Yeah, if I may conclude from uh, the speaker's presentation, we know that uh, online class is tough both for the students and also the lecturers, but uh, with a willingness to learn from the past and then also eager to learn new things and new technology, uh, we are sure that we can get through this. And then it is also to be opportunity to create and sustain strong 
uh, industrial partnership and then also support with our university. And as what Prof Hafiz said that new normal opens doors to new possibilities. Prof Wang and Prof Hafiz, thank you very much again for uh, your presentation. And uh, I will return the stage to Pak Givari as the MC for today. Thank you very much. This is the end of session two. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andri, for Thank leading you. session two. Yeah. Now we start to next session. For session three, I will invite someone who is not less passionate about everything. She is also a true learner, love to try something new, and she is a lecturer in tourism study program. I invite Ms. Ayu Merlita Sari to lead session three. Okay. You? Yeah. Hello, Pagi Fari. Can yes. you hear my voice? Yes. Very okay. clear. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Pagi Fari, for the opportunity for me. Actually, I'm becoming moderating in uh, some international conference. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. Welcome our speakers and. In this beautiful morning. Uh, this is the third session. Oh, in this third session, I also have uh, two speakers. Uh, I have uh, two distinguished speakers from two different countries. And our speakers, the, our first speakers is Dr. Candidate Andy Athar from Asia University. And the second one is a mess. Miss Fabriani Elvida Tristarani from Seoul National University. Hello, good morning, Mr. Andy. Pa Andy. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Hao. Oh, and how? Dr. Hao. Okay, what time is it now in Taiwan? Uh, now it's about uh, 11.23, so it's just one hour different. Oh, Hello. Oh, so we have a different, uh, hour, different uh, time with the Taiwan. So I am as a moderator. Today I will introduce you and also to read brief curriculum today of our speaker for all of you uh, participants. So uh, the first one, Mr. Andy Ashar from Asia uh, University Taiwan. It's a pleasure, uh, pleasure to meet you, Pa Andy. And she is uh, uh, he is a PhD candidate in a business administration uh, researcher. Okay, maybe everybody can uh, see his profile. Uh, okay, the CV of Mr. Andy. Recently, in 2020, he became an invited speaker for international conference on biotechnology and economic development national. And also, he, he became an invited speaker for international relations workshop and international trade of fisheries universitas Sriwijaya, Indonesia. Mr. Andy's research interest is about marketing strategy. Business statistics, sustainable supply chain. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Andy also an active writer on his personal blog named andyasar.com, if I'm not mistaken. I also read your blog. <laughs> One of his popular uh, articles, uh, the, the title is, uh, if you want to be rich, do not to be a lecturer. Actually, you know, it's very interesting since I am personally, personally can relate with this article. Okay, Mr. Andy, Pak Andy. Andy? Okay, Pandi, are you yeah. ready? Are you ready to give a presentation yes, yes, today? Yes. Okay. So we okay. will help you to share no, no, your slide it? right now. Okay. 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 Uh, can you make the time the, uh, is full? yours? Yes, this is mine. And can you make it uh, bigger? I mean, that's the okay. full. Uh, okay. This is too uh, light. Okay. Okay. Wait. 
All right, sir. So, can you? Okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, no problem. So, uh, so we are waiting and I will start. Okay, thank you very much for the occasion. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Chow An, Wosha uh, Andy, Wo Sui Seng in Yacho Ta Se, Taiwan. Uh, selamat uh, pagi menjelang siang untuk Pak Gifari, Bu Endang, dan rekan-rekan sekalian. Thank you very much for inviting me to join in this really good opportunity to share about uh, the, how the pandemic COVID-19 changed our socio-culture, especially related with the education. And here in this uh, good occasion, I'm not alone because I'm accompanied by my twin doctor actually, and because they just wake up, so I have to take care of these twin uh, babies. So I'm sorry if in the middle of my presentation, they're a little bit crying. So, so uh, I'm really sorry about that. But I try to make them not crying. <laughs> I'm, my name is Andy. Uh, I'm the Taiwan since 2013. Uh, I took my master degree. I still pursuing my PhD degree in business administration. And uh, uh, besides, as the uh, student, I also work as the lecturer, uh, especially under the Center of Language Training, and also working as the teacher uh, in uh, universities and also assistant in the uh, in Professor Ying Wei Chen's class. So here, maybe you can uh, start to the next uh, second second slides. Okay. Or maybe if you get difficult, maybe I can share my, my PPT. Is that okay if I share my uh, PPT? Maybe I can share by myself. Okay. Yes, it will be better. Yeah. Okay. So I will try. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Andy. We've got okay, like technical make one, problems make one here. Lah. Make one C. Make one C. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Make one C. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Uh, here. Okay. Uh, my presentation title is about the providing excellence uh, service for international students during the COVID-19 in Asia University. So because I'm the teaching assistant, uh, in this occasion, uh, I would like to as the, make the acknowledgement that all the content and material in this PPT on by Professor Yung Wee Chen as the Dean of International College of Asia University, Taiwan. So actually, uh, uh, Professor Chen is supposed to be here, but because is not available now because we are still preparing the international uh, higher education fair through the online tomorrow. Uh, so he has uh, he already injects by some uh, universities. Okay, so here Asia University. Uh, you can see uh, the picture in the PPT. Uh, Asia Unity is one of the most beautiful uh, campus in Taiwan. Uh, actually, we're still young. Uh, we're still uh, 19 years old, but we are now become the top 10 universities in Taiwan. Even we're still young, even we're still 19 years old, and we are the uh, one of the best private research. Our uni, uh, our university is content about uh, seven colleges and so uh, and about 30 uh, department. As you can see, uh, this is some picture in Asia University. That's really beautiful. We have also the one of the moderns. The one of the most modern uh, museum in Taiwan. So let's start. Let's talk about COVID-19 in Taiwan. Taiwan, maybe uh, everybody knows nice Taiwan as the ones of the uh, successful countries uh, facing the COVID-19. Here is some facts. The first one about positive case. Taiwan so far has only. I added update some information from here. Last night I just confirmed uh, 554 cases, positive cases, and most of them are imported cases. I can say 85% or almost 90% from the all the cases in Taiwan are imported from other countries. And now, and now today we are uh, already 200 days without local outbreak. It means we already 200 without the local infection. And uh, for the dead case, we only have seven people died of the virus. So from the 554, we only have seven people die because of the virus. 
And then uh, talking about the business, actually I opened uh, uh, and so we as, as continue as usual, took the people are strongly advised to wear masks, wash hands regularly and keep social distancing. Since the beginning of the outbreak, actually, uh, Taiwan never implement uh, lockdown like uh, in China or other countries. Taiwan's uh, for the business, but after that, every uh, everything is goes uh, normal. And for the manufacturing, the good habit in Taiwan uh, is because since the child, many of Taiwanese, many of the teenagers in Taiwan, they already become once they feel not good with their body, for the example, they get cold, they get fever, or anything related with uh, their body is feel not good. And the COVID-19 hit Taiwan since January. So, uh, and then the, the policy to wear the mask is become like the mandatory, then everybody will uh, do that. Never and never. So I didn't want anyone get protest uh, about this policy. So, so it's because of wearing the mask is become the habit in Taiwan. That's one of the good habit. In, in, uh, before the pandemic, before pandemic, since beginning I live in Taiwan, I always found that many people, when they feel not good, or even when they are riding the uh, public transportation, they always wear masks. It's like, it's not because they feel of people, no, it's because they feel that uh, I uh, spread the infection to other people. So it means that uh, the mindset in Taiwan is because uh, they want to keep other people safe. They want to not give other people like some uh, uh, virus or uh, something. So that's why they want to protect other people with wearing the mask. That's the mindset in Taiwan that already uh, teach to the uh, to the uh, when when they are still teenager, and then for traveling, traveling and marry are allowed and even uh, encouraged. There is no uh, like uh, uh, restriction or any close of the traveling. So then, what's the reason why Taiwan can wait? Oh yeah, before before I I, I, I continue my my uh, my presentations, one more things. The economic development in Taiwan is not become negative. I mean that when other people like Indonesia now the economic growth is become negative under zero percent, and other uh, other countries like Singapore, like uh, Japan, like uh, USA, and many countries in the world when they hit uh, COVID nineteen, uh, their economic growth is become negative. Taiwan actually uh, is not become under zero percent. Their economic growth still. Uh, above of the zero percent. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the economic growth of Taiwan until the second quarter is reaching uh, 1.8 percent. It means still positive, even uh, it's decreased from the normal economic growth. Before the pandemic, our economic growth is reaching about seven or nine uh, percent, but uh, during the pandemic, it's be decreasing become 1.8 percent. It why then why? Uh, Taiwan can survive from the COVID-19. The first one is about attitude. Attitude is the key in Taiwan. As once of the attitude decides what an altitude. Taiwan, Taiwan people or Taiwanese are well aware of the danger of the virus and are serious about the disease. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Taiwan uh, already uh, get aware about, I mean, that's, they, 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 they start to concern about this virus since December, when other countries uh, didn't realize that this uh, virus will become the pandemic in the world. So in, the, in December, um, they already uh, realized that it's something happened in Wuhan. They already know uh, the information of the, the new virus still related with phenomena. So in the, in the end of December, in 31 December, uh, the, from the CDC Taiwan and Ministry of Education, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, we already sent the message and email, official email to uh, WHO uh, telling that this virus 
may become the pandemic. But WHO didn't respond it. It's like become, oh, this is just information from Taiwan. But they didn't, they didn't realize that this will become something very serious uh, next time. Then, because of there is no response from WHO, Taiwan start to close the direct flight from Wuhan to uh, Taiwan in the end of last year, in the end of the December 2019. After that, Taiwan start to uh, activate the protocol. It means Taiwan actually already set up the uh, how to say uh, the emergency uh, protocol. Since we have like the good experience in 2003 when we hit by uh, SARS virus. So starting from 2003, we already set up the uh, how to say is emergency protocol that can activate anytime when we facing the emergency uh, situation. And in the in the beginning of this year, Taiwan activate this protocol. Then after that, everything is changing. Besides that, besides that, uh, because we have the serious uh, protocol, we have this, we have already. Uh, good mitigation and everybody starting to uh, become serious in Taiwan. I never found people who reject this or uh, reject this this kind of information. Like we know that in some countries, many people say that oh, COVID nineteen is fake, COVID nineteen is hoax, COVID nineteen is something is not true, right? In in USA, there are some group that campaign that. Uh, COVID-19 is just a fake. Then we can see right now uh, many cases happen in USA. But in Taiwan, we have a good attitude. Many people have the good attitude. It means we never think some. Uh, we never think that uh, this virus is a fake. But we just we realize that if the the government say that this virus is may become something dangerous so everybody will uh, realize we have to be stuck for a very uh, dangerous situation so that's why the attitude is become the key in taiwan why we have the, we, we why we can survive from the covid-19 the second thing why we why taiwan can win uh, from the covid-19 is about the our nice the whole nation has remained very alert to the virus because Taiwan had some bitter experience in fighting against us in 2003, like I just uh, mentioned before. Number three is because the proactive precaution measure and start early. The pandemic precaution measure is start early and new technologies like social media platform are used for contact tracing and other purposes. Taiwan government announced the warning of the virus as early as when the outbreak just start and took strict measure very quickly and efficiently, such as close the border, extra check and testing at the airport, and etc. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, Taiwan start to activate the protocol from the 1st of January uh, 2022. Uh, then the first cases are found in Taiwan at uh, 16 January. At the time, it's almost uh, Chinese New Year. So at, at, at that time, when people celebrating their very long holidays uh, for Chinese uh, New Year, uh, the government in the Ministry of Health and uh, Central uh, Disease uh, the, 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 the CDC, they they, they start they al uh, they always work to uh, mitigate uh, about the future of the outbreak. And then in Taiwan, uh, one of the successful key is become we have the good surveillance. It means that people uh, will always screen when they uh, arrive in Taiwan. For the example, people when they arrive in Taiwan, when they have any symptom or feel not good, they will uh, check by the the the, the uh, how to say the officer in in. Uh, in uh, airport and uh, in Taiwan, as I know, uh, there is no uh, cases of the imported cases who pass the screening from the uh, airport. It means all people who arrive in Taiwan, they uh, will declare about their situation honestly. 
they never feel okay when i feel not good then i will i will say ah, i'm still okay that that's the the how did what's what's of the key uh why taiwan can survive because everybody even it's not taiwanese but because we never in uh we never how to say uh intimidate them ha huh. you are uh, not good right you are you are you are you are still sick something like, something like that when people are afraid then they will lie about their situation in taiwan no your harness we we uh how to say the the officer in 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 airport tell us your harness your 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 attitude to tell us the real situation of you is will make this country safe i mean so everybody must uh how to say must realize that their harness will will protect taiwan to still safe okay next one it's about the transparency of information in time of the crisis it's fact matter most taiwan minister of health and welfare hold press conference on daily basis to report and explain the latest situation of the pandemic since the beginning of this outbreak ministry minister of the health and welfare always show always give the press conference every day in the uh in the in, the, in television or in uh, in in front of the um in the press and journalists it mean uh every day the minister will uh explain will tell the real situation in taiwan they didn't uh hit some information so in taiwan since the beginning the transparency is become the manner how the government explain the situation to the people that's the key one of the key why taiwan can survive because uh, this transparency will makes uh, will makes people give the big respect and big uh, trust to the government if the people can give their trust if the people can uh, respect to the government then we can work together to to uh, to survive from this uh, how to say from this uh, situation from this pandemic we can see, uh, we can see from uh, we can learn from other uh, from other countries that uh, the people the people some people in 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 other country uh, didn't give the trust to their government so that's why they try to uh, do something rebel that that's not not uh, not happen in taiwan because we always give our transparency to build our trust mutual trust between government and the people and the next uh, uh, the next thing that why taiwan can win from the covid-19 is because of the solidarity solidarity is the outcome and the key of the success from the transparency now it's become the solidarity that's what happened i can give you the sample uh six months ago uh, in the middle of the pandemic uh, my 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 wife my wife uh, was delivering our twin babies at the time we don't know how we have to take care of the babies we just uh, live uh, i'll just live with, with my wife and we don't have any family in taiwan so we try to invite we try to invite our uh, parent to come to, to come over to taiwan as the regulation they come uh, and then they have to doing the uh, quarantine for two weeks during the part, during the quarantine our neighbor are really good it are they didn't reject they didn't uh, feel afraid about uh, uh, when my 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 uh, parent is uh, doing quarantine in our home i uh, sorry my wife and i has to living outside because uh, as the taiwan regulation um, we cannot live uh, together since my wife ha- is the was the uh, pregnant so we have to live separately with our parents my parents stay he- stay here in taiwan in our home and our uh, our our neighbor they feel okay no problem and they give us the support okay what we can do for you then uh they always uh, monitor us oh uh our 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 parent in the good condition and then they also always uh, watch uh our home since they cannot 
go outside and just stay at home for 14 days. So that's one of the solidarity in Taiwan that I uh, have the experience for that. And the next uh, uh, things that why Taiwan can win is because the unified national strategy. Taiwan adopt a unified national strategy through the long experience infecting against all type of virus. And we have a trusting community, the willing to cooperate of a well-informed uh, public. So another in another uh, another things that's why Taiwan can win is because the marks. Taiwan, since the beginning of the pandemic, we start to ban the export of marks because we try demand from the in the in the in, in, in Taiwan. So maybe I forget. And then the next one is about the health protocol. Uh, it's required that each citizen to wear a mask and was one uh, in the public transportation, in the bus, in the train, or even in the restaurant. They always provide uh, like, uh, how to say it's like alcohol to 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 wash their hands. Besides that, uh, wearing the uh, wearing the mask is like a mandatory. When you didn't when you didn't wear the mask, other people will remind you. They will say, "Hey, please wear the mask." Or when we get, when we use the public transportation, and you didn't wear the mask, you cannot use the public transportation. Even until now, Taiwan still uh, implement this kind of the policy. When you ride the public transportation, or you stay in uh, in the room with many people, you still need to wear the mask even we already passed 200 days without the local outbreak local infection but this kind of policy it st still become uh, still still exist as the regulation for for all the people living in taiwan so now when we attend the class when we attend the uh, meeting in the room with the many people we should wear the mask and then the next one is about medical related resources are sufficient and healthcare professional are high uh, quality. Uh, comprehensive national health insurance systems, uh, hospitals, medical professional, and information system are adequate and advanced. So the government can quickly resort to these resources to combat the virus. Relevant immigration and medical information, for example, are used to trace. Tracing is become one of the key why we have the very minimum uh, cases in Taiwan. Once people are uh, found positive uh, from the COVID-19, then we will uh, trace who is the or who are the people uh, contact with the people who get positive. For the example, last time uh, there is one uh, migrant worker from Philippines. Actually, uh, these people, this guy, already lived in Taiwan for three years, and then when they return to uh, Philippines, uh, the authority in uh, Philippines say that these people is positive. So they inform uh, Taiwan's government about this guy. And then the Taiwan's government start to trace the people contacted with these people. So Taiwan test around 300 people who ever contact with this, this guy. And all of them are negative. And then our government uh, send the confirmation to the Philippi uh, Philippine authority, uh, say that maybe uh, it's uh, a mistake. It means that uh, maybe the test is must be uh, must be repeat again because since we already traced 300 people and all of them are negative. And then th the next one is about the control of the export of masks and quickly efficient increase the production line. Ladies and gentlemen, in Taiwan, uh, when in the beginning of the pandemic, we know that the mask is something important and the number is very limited at that time. So starting from February, our government tried to invite many uh, manufacturers in Taiwan to change their industry for a while to produce the mask. That's uh, what, what we did last time. In February until April, Many of the manufacturer in Taiwan change their uh, industry, become pro, uh, the the mass production. That's uh, why starting from the uh, April we can start to export some mass to other countries like in Indonesia. Uh, besides that, we we know that we we have very limited 
uh, marks. But after that, we can uh, export the, the, the marks to other countries. So that's about the fact of the why we can survive uh, from the COVID-19 in Taiwan. Oh yeah, one more thing, one more thing. Uh, it's about uh, the uh, compensation. In Taiwan, in Taiwan, people who doing quarantine, people who doing quarantine for 14 days will get compensation, but 1,000 Taiwan dollar, it's about uh, 500,000 rupiah for one day. So if you doing uh, quarantine for 14 days, you will receive 14,000 Taiwan dollar. That's uh, compensation from the government to the people who doing. So everybody feel happy when they release from the quarantine, they get the money. That's uh, what uh, people, uh, what government did uh, until now. Beside that, beside that, to uh, give the economic stimulus, Taiwan's government give like the voucher for the Taiwanese people, for the Taiwanese. What's the voucher? So everybody in Taiwan, it means that Taiwanese citizens, they can buy the voucher with 1,000 Taiwan dollar. This voucher, of course. Then they will get the voucher uh, as uh, equals with 3,000. So in, 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 in rupiah, you buy 500,000 rupiah. Then you will receive one and a half million rupiah. So it's become like the very uh, uh, benefit uh, stimulus for the Taiwanese in Taiwan. Then I'm sorry, just... Pak Andi. I'm very sorry because uh, our time is running out right now. Okay, you can yeah, okay. continue just, your presentation. Can you give me a little bit? Uh, just five minutes. I will talk about Asia University. Just a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Sure. So sorry for that. Okay, and now I will talk about Asia University. How Asia University uh doing the uh mitigate the uh during the pandemic in asia university we uh, already benchmarked uh by the government as the role model of the uh, universities to uh, implement the how to say to implement the uh health protocol in university so uh in taiwan there are only three University become the role model. The first one is National Taiwan University, uh, National Taiwan University. The second one is Asia University, and the third one is National Chengkung University. In Taiwan, these three universities become the role model, implement the health protocol. Even until now, we still uh, implement the very strict protocol. And then what we did with the uh, precautionary measure, we use the single entry. It means that uh, in, in Asia University, we just open one single entry for every building. That's to uh, prevent that people can uh, who enter the building can monitor who is entered and who is out. And then the second one, we use the health form. Everybody, every day, we use we have to make the health form online. Uh, it's a pass, uh, daily pass ticket to... Uh, how to monitor our situation before we enter the uh, building in campus. And then the temperature check. Every building has the temperature check uh, station. So uh, in Asia University, we have about seven build, uh, temperature check uh, building. They will, uh, the, the, the staff will, will check the, our temperature. And then the quarantine. Every student, every faculty, every professor need to do quarantine in our school. Uh, personal health declaration daily pass. When we doing the online uh, application every day, you will ask, we will get the question about our situation. Then the result will be uh, depends on the uh, depends on the uh, how to say the the, the 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 color of the daily uh, pass. The first one is green. Green is mean you are okay. Then you can enter the school. The yellow. Your situation, your condition, your health condition is not good, but you still okay. You still allow to enter the campus. And then the last one, uh, the red one. Then this the red one. When you get the daily pass red, you cannot enter any building in campus. You have to do. Some. And then uh, we also uh, warn our student uh, 
uh, even when they, they travel back to their home country or when they arrive in Taiwan. So we use the social media, we use a uh, line, uh, WhatsApp to prevent, to spread this information to our students. And then uh, this is the three types of the health management in Taiwan. I will skip it. And uh, I talk about the new normal in education in Taiwan uh, because of the time. I will just uh, skip this one. In Taiwan, in Asia University, we start our online uh, class since the beginning of the pandemic. It mean it is about February. We just uh, postpone our new uh, how to say the new uh, semester for two weeks. After that, we start our uh, semester in the beginning of March. Uh, at that time, we start our online courses. But it's just a half semester, uh, starting from the end, the end of the April, uh, because of the situation is become uh, become normal. So all the classes become offline. So we didn't hold any uh, online courses for a whole semester. It's just a half semester. And then we for the summer because we invite some student from other countries. Uh, so we hold summer online course, uh, summer program. Uh, and then uh, beside that. Uh, last time we hold education fair using the online in June, and then tomorrow, tomorrow we will hold education fair Taiwan Higher Education Fair in Vietnam using the uh, online. I my by I myself create the some platform uh, we call as THEF uh, virtual app. It's like for education fair. We uh, develop this kind of platform for education our education fair. In tomorrow, we will hold education fair for Vietnam. At 21st November, we will hold education fair in Indonesia. So for you, if you attend this uh, uh, this, this this occasion, this, this session, uh, don't forget 21st November, we will also hold education fair uh, using the online. So you just download the application in Play Store or App Store. And then you can join our education fair. You can watch the presentation from each university. You can have the chatting and send the message to each university representative. You can also get the brief introduction from each university participate in this uh, in this uh, education fair. So the reason why we want to invite more students from other countries to study in Taiwan, we want to give the opportunity to every student in around the world to feel the atmosphere of education in Taiwan. But because of the pandemic, we try to shift our uh, education from, from offline to, uh, to online. So I create this kind of the application. For further information, I will uh, send this information to Pak Givari or Bu Endang if we already get started for, for Indonesia Education Fair. That's my presentation. Thank you very much. Stay healthy, stay safe, and greeting from uh, Taiwan. Thank you very much. Okay, Sishe, Pak Andi, thank you, Mr. Andi, for your presentation. It is very insightful. We got a new useful information about current condition in Taiwan. Uh, hello, everyone here. If you have any question, according to his presentation, you can leave your comment on the chat box and directly uh, giving questions in the Q&A speaker. Ani Elvida Tristarani, halo Miss Abby, ayo ngasih yo, ayo ngasih yo, can you hear me? Okay, it's a little, uh, on my microphone is a little bit trouble, maybe on mine. Okay. Halo, so Miss Abby, can you hello? hear my voice? I can hear. Yeah, us. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. It's more name. clearly. Okay. Okay. Oren mani ya. Just the name. Oren mani kita. Okay. So we now we have a Miss Feby. Uh, I would like to read uh, about her. Biography curriculum video. Can you help me to share, Mister Miss Feby? 
biography. So Miss Debbie is a PhD student in Seoul National University, one of the best university in Seoul, majoring Korean modern literature. Now she is currently living in Seoul. Uh, absolutely, she can speak Korean fluently like a Korean. And Miss Febby is active in organization. She is a lecturer in the Korean language department, OKM, but she is also independent translator and interpreter. Miss Febby uh, active make a publication and also she is actively being a speaker on international seminar related to Korean studies, uh, language, literature, and cultural conference and last year in 2019 she had presented her paper at the 15 international conference on language education humanities and innovation icrahi 2019 in london that's very amazing and this session miss Fabi will share about higher education condition during covid 19 pandemic in south korea Ms. Febby, are you ready for, to present your uh, presentation? Febby, yes. can you speak English or do you speak English or do you speak English? Can you speak English? Can you speak English? Can you hear me? So, uh, uh, I would be happy. <laughs> okay, now the time is short. We, have, we do have a 20 minutes for your presentation. You okay. can see your screen right now. All right. Can you see my screen right now? Not yet in my computer. Oh, okay. Maybe others. It's it's open in my computer though. Okay. Yeah, you can start your presentation. Oh, okay. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much uh, untuk Ibu Endang, Pak Yufari, Ibu Andri ya tadi ya, kemudian Ibu Ayum, and then also for the distinguished speakers, Professor Wang, Professor Hafiz, and Pak Andi. Um, I'm here actually uh, to present or to share some experience uh, being an international student in South Korea during pandemic situation right now. And uh, so, because I'm here currently enrolling in Seoul National University for my first semester in Korean Modern Literature. Uh, I came here in, in the pandemic situation. So here is my outline. I will uh, maybe explain about a little bit about general overview of COVID-19 situation in South Korea before continuing to the higher education uh, system or higher education situation in South Korea during pandemic, especially the university system. And then I would also uh, share, I would like to also share about some maybe tips on no, admissions or scholarships that also opens in South Korea during pandemic. So yeah, so South Korea is also one of the first country that uh, deal with COVID-19 and the very first case was found in January 2020, but it was only 10, uh, zero to two cases per day before the major outbreak um, happened in the city of Daegu, Gyeongsan province. Uh, it was, it happened in February of on February 19th, and then the highest case per day was 909 cases, which was... Excuse me, yeah. uh, sorry, Miss, Miss Febby, I'm sorry, yes? because I cannot see your uh, presentation. Oh. The... Okay. You okay. can help uh, from here. Okay, yeah. sure, sure. You and I'm your sorry, screen, maybe... and we can make it for you. Wait a oh, minute. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. I think I have... Oh, right, right. okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't. Oh, okay. Okay, on the fifth slide, right? Yeah. Fifth slide. Oh, sorry. I thought I shared my screen. <laughs> but I think it's, it's better like this. On the fifth slide. Yep. Mm -hmm. Next. Oh, wait. I'm still waiting. Like, or should I? 
should I do my right. I'm yeah. sorry uh, Miss Feby I think here we got technical oh, problem okay. yeah it's okay try I try to present yes once yes again. okay sorry can you can you can you can you see my yes Yes, yes. Now can you see? Okay, sorry, I didn't. Yeah. All right. We can so, screen. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Now, okay. Sorry. All right. So I was here. <laughs> so I will continue. Sorry. So the highest case in the first major outbreak in South Korea was uh, 909 in February 2000. Uh, in February to 29th, and then after that, Korea has strengthened the social distancing system, but they never actually uh, applied the lockdown uh, like may maybe some other countries. So they only uh, strengthened the social distancing uh, system, for example, wearing masks, and maybe they did not allow public gathering for more than 50 people and then this the school started to close and maybe the gathering started to um, delayed and such yeah and something like that and then the the cases declined nearly to zero in in mid-may 2020 and then after that the the situation got better but then after august 2020 the second wave stroke and here they it happened in the capital city of seoul and especially around in gyeonggi province and it related to the demonstration um that happened on the independence day of korea which is 15th of august 2020 and also it related to some clusters for the the church in gyeonggi province and then the highest per day was 457 and then after that they had the highest level of social distancing which is 2.5 and it's almost near to lockdown system which is like level three so uh, after that the restaurant started to ban the dine-in and then the cafe also only allowed to take out and then the school still closed and um, the gymnastic center or pc room they did not allow uh, the operation. And then from August to October, the cases started to decline since the application of the level uh, 2.5 social distancing. And then as 29 rose up to three digits again, uh, at 100 per day, but then the government started to loosen the social distancing into level one. So nowadays, the restaurants allow the uh, dining dining in system and the franchise cover as well and some public schools also started to reopen again so how korea dealt with um covid19 actually i was not here in the the beginning of the first outbreak so i could not really uh, share my experience and so i uh, did some research and they had this uh, some system which is like detection, containment and treatment. So they expanded testing capacity and then they also built some isolation and quarantine tracing system and they also um, uh, increased recruitment of additional health workers, especially in uh, the first uh, outbreak in Daegu. So they recruited a lot of additional health workers, such as doctors and nurses for uh, working in Daegu. And they also built some temporary hospitals and etc. So I could see that the government in Korea, they had this aggressive response dealing with COVID-19 because um, as far as I know, they uh, did I think they did not do this, uh, do this, the same like in the March 2015. So I think they uh, learned from that a bad experience in dealing with March 2015, uh, I think 16 or 15. And then they started to become aggressive in responding this um, pandemic. So they uh, spread the protection policy. And then also they asked the citizens to participate, especially wearing masks. And then really amazed me is that Korea has this high technology tracing system. So when someone uh, is, uh, you know, um, near to the uh, patients and they will be able to trace this uh, with the number, phone number, or maybe the credit card system. And then the situation right now, they have uh, 26,000 cases and then they only have 461 day deaths and then mostly from the all elderly. And then the, the recovered patients are 24,073. So here are some pictures and they are already um, recovering and then the people started to go out and then yes, yeah, so they start to reopen again. 
So now I will continue to the higher education in South Korea during pandemic. And so the COVID-19 in South Korea was that the start of the new school year had been delayed until five weeks. And usually they started in break in Daegu on February 2020. They started to delay the new school year until April 2020. And then they closed down the public schools and university because of um, aware because of the awareness of infections so they depended on technology to conduct the class but I've actually sometimes do uh, video you know classes on online classes so I'm sure that they could uh, adapt to the system very well back then uh, but then however the difficulties faced at first from especially from the students like in the you know elementary and maybe junior high schools and then especially because Korea has this you know education number one kind of thing so they have to go for the private tutors for the elementary school oh uh, no no for the high school students so it was kind of hard that as far as I saw in the news that they have to go from Uh, to the private online tutor in like you know online classes and it gave them you know a little bit of uh, difficulties at first but then nowadays because the uh, the cases has have been declined from the second outbreak this uh the elementary and high school uh, started to reopen again but then maybe they have the schedule like maybe this week the this school will open and then the next week that school will open so uh, they have this kind of schedule and then however the university classes remain using remote system which is online classes and I'm still using I'm still doing my online classes here even though some of the smaller classes you know they have already the on offline system but then most of the classes are still uh, conducted online in especially especially in my university. So then I will also share about the international students admissions during pandemic because maybe I came here right uh, after the second outbreak and I applied for the admissions for this uh, Seoul University, Seoul National University at the first outbreak. And I thought that the pandemic will give a big effect on this. But, the, but then as, uh, as far as I know, the long-term visa in Korea were not banned. So students and working visas are still allowed, but then the short-term visas, for example, for uh, like uh, traveling and you know just short working visas are banned. So the admission process for exchange student and full-term students were proceeded normally as far as I know, because when I was in UGM, in UGM, I still uh, happened to receive some exchange student program uh, invitation for the students uh, for my universe, uh, for my faculty students, I mean, for my uh, Korean language students. And then it was in the first break first outbreak uh, uh, time. So they did not ban for the exchange students to come to Korea and especially for the full-term students too. So however, the because of the pandemic situation, maybe some of the workers and some of the officers have to had to work at home. And so it happened to um, change the, you know, the some systems regarding to the documents screening and all that. So we had to scan our documents uh, instead of um, sending our documents by post. And then also there were some slight of delay due to the pandemic, the pandemic situation for my admissions as well. And also for some uh, scholarship uh, admissions uh, in the beginning of this year, as far as I know. And then, so uh, when uh, foreign students coming to Korea, uh, as what uh, Pak Andi said also in uh, in Taiwan, uh, they they also have to do the mandatory 14 days quarantine. And also in Korea too, we have to uh, do the quarantine upon arrival. And then we have to take the swab test or PCR test before starting our quarantine. And then after finishing the quarantine to make sure that we don't have any viruses inside our body. So the quarantine facility also are provided by the campus or government. We can choose between the campus or, or government within the government facility is very, is extremely expensive and it's a burdensome to some students so usually the foreign students chose the campus facility and I also chose my uh, campus facility to do my quarantine or maybe they also can have the independent quarantine facility for example if they already you know um, 
take the rent house here so they will be able to go right away and then the application for measurement during quarantine it's like uh the body checking temperature they have the online application itself so you have to check like twice a day uh it's uh, not different with the taiwan system and then we have to also do the qr code inputting for uh, if we go to someone like some places so i would also share my experience because it's i don't know it's uh, bizarre actually coming to korea in this situation and i also did my master's degree here so i could see the changes and how you know from the international airport until my school how uh, pandemic really changed um, the, the life of you know many people here so i came here in the beginning of second outbreak which is the last days of august 2020 and this is these are some of the pictures that i um recorded uh, that that i took from the airport so this is like the quarantine certificate by the time you arrive and in the airport they will have this special line for the quarantine and then they will make sure that you have the guard the guardians so they will call your friends or your teacher to make sure that uh, we are under their supervision in case that we, you know, um, escape from the quarantine facility. So they will have my guardian number here and then they will uh, strengthen uh, the control. So they will escort us from the arrival arrival gate until the place where we have to get the bus. And then I could say that they had the police and then they had the armies in the airport themselves to you know help for the the system and then there we took the bus to the clinic in our the near the nearby clinic near the university and then we take the pcr test and then they will ask us to um up, uh, would, would you, uh install this application this one is the self quarantine safety protection where you have to uh, measure your body temperature twice a day and then it's like um, connected to your phone so they will know your uh, location in case you you know escape they will know that where you escape and then you cannot escape because there will be a big fine and we, you get you can get deported right away so i did my uh, 14 days of quarantine inside snu inside my university and this is my facility for quarantine this one is the faculty house and i did not do the free one because i could not get into korea uh, by the designated period for the free quarantine service and then they also give us the three meals a day uh, and they made sure that we did you know we are not in hunger in hunger so they will give us like lots of um, foods and they will provide the uh, special kit for the temperature body the the thermometer and then the like the alcohol for you know for hands and mask so here I started my online classes as well. So they did the online orientation through YouTube, through you, uh, Zoom platform and the uh, online classes in SNU mostly uh, used Zoom uh, platform. But then I could not show you here because I did not um, capture my uh, class uh, photos. So yeah, so the social culture change during pandemic in my university especially. Uh, all of the classes were conducted in Zoom platform. So the university has the, you know, the, maybe they have the Zoom webs, uh, the Zoom ID itself. So they have the SNU Zoom platform, and then they will send the links into the integrated system of class website. Maybe in UGM, we have ELOC. So in SNU, we also have this international uh, uh, integrated system class system of class website which we call it etl and then there we upload uh, they they will upload the zoom platform link and then they will upload the uh, materials for classes and we also upload our um uh, what is it like uh, homeworks and then our papers such such you know such like that so actually we also uh, used this when i was in my master's degree but then now they really come into a hand because of this pandemic situation where everybody has to do it online so when i came to campus i i've I did not really go to campus by uh, here right now because like of the, you know, the situation, but then I could feel that I could see that least people came to campus, uh, you know, compared to last time I uh, were here for my master's. So they 
some people also want go to the library or they go to their um, laboratory, but then uh, not many people really uh, go to campus. And then especially the unique thing in Korea is that they have lots of cultural activities such as, you know, for example, we have our spring festivals in Korea every May. And then, you know, when the festival starts, they will um, invite some of the Uh, famous K-pop stars to you know sing in the festivals but then during the pandemic uh, we are not allowed to of course to open the festival such uh, like this and then so the the spring festivals was uh, banned was delayed and then also the extracurricular activities such as we call it dungari and then they I think they don't have uh, any dungaris right now And then especially the eating out habit or the eating out um, culture in Korea because some students really like to go out and then drink together with their friends. And then we can see lots of pubs and lots of um, uh, like the restaurants around the school very empty during this pandemic. And even my friend also mentioned about it that the drinking culture in Korea has vanished due to corona. So especially in the beginning of the outbreak, but then nowadays it gradually comes back to normal. Like people goes to people go to restaurant, people go out drinking out with their friends and they yeah, I think it will be back in the, the beginning before the pandemic. And then the least social interaction with fellow classmates and friends, uh, I think it is like uh, very impacted by the pandemic because uh, especially for the new students, new foreign students, they could not interact with their fellow classmates, new classmates because of the online system. Maybe it's going to be very awkward, you know, to usually we go to class and we get, we can, you know, um, Uh, connect with our classmates but then nowadays uh, it's very rare to see uh, how uh, people don't go outside to meet their classmates and all of that and though uh, even though social distancing level 2.5 was applied back then from September um, August to October the beginning of October when people go outside in Korea masks were mandatory so they will be fine if we don't put our mask here and then they will maybe contact the officials if we uh, we refuse to wear masks and so people here when uh, we, we, when we go to outside and we will uh, put our mask on and we will have the social distancing uh, you know left, uh, system and then the transportation operate normally though in Indonesia we have maybe when the beginning and in, in the beginning of pandemic they will have this kind of social distancing transportation where you cannot sit in some designated like seats right but then in korea they don't really do that so people just like uh, they they know that they have to put mask and then mask is very important here so they just don't do the the x sign you know the they don't uh, limit the people inside the transportations and then body temperature checking our must when we go to the uh, you know the public uh, public places such as restaurants cafes and library or maybe school school buildings and then they will also ask us to put our information such as like phone number or maybe the place where we live and then also sometimes we have to put our QR code uh, connected with our phone number here or maybe for uh, connected to our Kakao, Kakao ID. Kakao is like WhatsApp in Korea. They really uh, use it a lot. So, yeah. And then, so getting into South Korea during pandemic, I think it's not actually, uh, they don't have any significant difference because you can actually come to Korea and then you can uh, apply for a scholarship here during pandemic because uh, they will have the admissions, the normal admissions to every university here, especially the scholarship also, they do, they do not um, decline or they do not decrease the amount of the scholarship as far as I know, they still open for the foreign students. And especially in Korea, we have this Korean government scholarship for, program that I will also we'll talk about a little bit in the uh, after this so they did not ban this um, scholarship as well and i i know that they also opened the this year's application on february so we can check the university website if maybe some of the students here are Uh, you know, interested in coming to Korea, you can go, you can come here and then you can apply for the exchange program. You can exchange, uh, apply for maybe the 
a master's or the doctoral degree because there are not any you know uh, significant changes so maybe this one is just some uh, insights about the global korea scholarship which is um the best scholarship in korea that people really want to come to Korea with this scholarship because they uh, provide lots of amount of scholarship itself and then they uh, have the undergraduate and then they have the graduate uh, system and then you can check also in the website they have the full information there so this is the uh, rough amount of the benefits that we can get through this scholarship so I also get this scholarship when I did my master's and then this time I did not take this scholarship though but then it's almost you know, always, they always open every year. So I think this one is the end of my presentation. Maybe I will accept like lots of, you know, if um, questions regarding to uh, Korean situation right now. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Ibu Febi Kamsamida for giving us Thanks. a new knowledge about the current, how current condition in South Korea. Wow, so uh, everything well prepared, yeah, in South Korea, it, it, it is, from government or from university. Okay, according to both speaker, we know that both country in uh, university in Taiwan and South Korea are prepared very well to face this pandemic. Uh, both prevent centers have finished uh, their presentation. Now the next agenda is Q and A session. Uh, if everyone, please uh, give your question in the chat chat box. Now we have uh, one question from Miss Virginia. Hello, Miss Virginia. You can ask directly to Mr. Oh, Andy. Yeah. Okay. Thank Andy you. Uh, mm -hmm. Hello, Mr. Andy. I'm Hello. Virginia. Uh, yeah. Let's yeah. how Andy Samsung. Uh, uh, we know that uh, SV and Asia University have three plus one uh, program for diploma student who are interested in continuing their studies to a bachelor and i'm the one of the students who are interested to join the program uh relating uh that pro program can i know uh more information about three plus one program uh, of our program maybe about the benefits that i get and then uh, scholarship selection process and then when to intake the program and for the uh, what what do you call it uh, whether i can take the lpdp scholarship when i graduate from au because there is an equivalent diploma for those who who study abroad it's like a penyetaraan ijazah thank you okay thank you miss virginia for your question uh pak andi Please uh, answer your question kindly shortly okay. because the time is yeah, running yeah, yeah. right okay. now. Thank you. Okay, for <laughs> yes, the okay. plus one program, uh, actually between uh, UGM and Asia University already signed the MOA, uh, and it's supposed to be implemented this year. I think supposed to be because uh, I remember that the MOA already signed last year, so uh, the MOA uh, could be implemented starting from this year, but because of the pandemic, maybe it's delayed for one more year, uh, one more semester or two, uh, two semester. Okay, for three plus one, it's mean you three years study in UGM as the diploma three, D3, and then study one more year in Asia University as the bachelor student. But your status in UGM will be not graduated yet until you receive the bachelor degree in Asia University. So the total it will be four years you study in uh, UGF, if I'm not mistaken. This is the, the, the content of the MOA. So uh, you will become as four years study in UGM, but day three in, in UGM, uh, bachelor degree in uh, Asia University. That's number one. 
then the second one when it started because you start uh, to uh, uh, to to study bachelor degree usually for bachelor degree we just open for one time per year it means it you supposed to be intake in september not in february but if you take if you study for master or phd you can take an, uh, any semester whether uh, september or even in uh, february and then number three Uh, for the equivalent process, uh, for the equivalent process or penyetaraan, uh, yes, we have this kind of the process, and then uh, Dikti already recognize us as the one of the university in Taiwan who can uh, 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 apply for this uh, equivalent. We have almost thousands alumni from from Asia University. Uh, it's from Indonesia. So if Uh, you study in Asia University, don't be worried because DICTI or uh, our Indonesian government already recognized Asia University as one of the university, who, the real university in uh, in Taiwan. And then the fourth one, uh, for, the, for the scholarship, yes, you can apply any scholarship once you graduate from Asia University. I remember one of my classmates uh, graduate from Asia University received Uh, LPDP scholarship uh, to apply for PhD uh, degree uh, at the time, and then for the uh, for the scholarship uh, during your bachelor degree. I'm sorry because this is like the joint uh, double degree program, so there is no scholarship. But the 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 tuition fee, if I'm not mistake, please cross check to Bu Endang or Pak Givari. Uh, if I'm not mistake. The uh, the tuition the tuition fee will be same, will be same with uh, what uh, you pay in UGM. So for the example, you pay five million to UGM, then you just need to pay five million also to Asia University. That's what I know uh, from uh, from the uh, the MOA. Uh, one of the best practice is now is uh, Universitas Erlangga. They already start. Uh, stand their join, uh, double degree program from the vocational school to bachelor degree in Asia University uh, since last year. And this and this year, uh, they send more than 20. Last year, they sent 24. And this year, because of the pandemic, actually, they already uh, already already recruit more than 50 students. But because of pandemic, some students uh, postpone to study in Asia University. Yeah, because many too many uh, preparation when they have to go to ta uh, Taiwan right now. Uh, so the number is decrease. Uh, the number of students now decrease become only 2020 if I'm not, I'm not mistake. In the near future, we already agree to vocational school in UNI Universitas Negeri Jogja. We already signed the MOU. So in the near future, we will start our double degree three years in uh, UNI. And then one year in Asia University, same as UGM. So if UGM start to implement this uh, program next year, it will be maybe uh, the same year with UNI. Okay. And then the number four, uh, I just re uh, I just received one more uh, one more information. Okay. Uh, I just received the information last uh, night. Last night. Okay. For you who learn who study. In College of Management Asia University, we just received the the, the last ranking from Thai, uh, from the Times Higher Education that our College of Management are number 230 in the world, number 230 in the world, and we are number three in Taiwan after National Taiwan University and National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. So we are number three, uh, the best. Uh, college of Management in Taiwan, and we are number one for the private university in the College of Management uh, in uh, Taiwan. Uh, okay, so if you if you start to taking the uh, double degree program in College of Management in Asia University, it means you are study in the uh, college, uh, the best college, two hundred thirty rank in the world. Okay. That's my uh, answer. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Randy. Uh, maybe Miss Virginia, after this uh, seminar, you can directly go to Ibu Endang or Pipari. Oh, yeah, uh, I already asked some uh, several Mr. questions. Mr. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Uh, thank you for the uh, answer, Mr. Andy. It's really helped me. Okay, thank you, Miss Virginia. Now to Miss Febi, I have a personal uh, question because you are now student in the in the uh, South Korea. Uh, do you have a, do you face any difficulties during your study in 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 South Korea? Right now or before? Uh, maybe in a lot of students in Indonesia complain about the internet connection or in uh, your study. Oh, okay, okay. Actually, no, I really enjoy my study here uh, as online students <laughs> because they're really, oh, you know, as far as we know that Korea has the maybe the highest speed of internet, maybe, I guess, in the world. So it's very comfortable um, doing online system classes here. But then maybe because my major has to, uh, uh, requires me to read a lot of books and it's it's quite a little bit different for me to you know always see the ebooks or the pdf files and so i prefer to go to the maybe to the library uh, wearing mask and then do my uh, safety protection well and then buy uh, borrow some books from the library but then as far as uh, two two weeks i don't know two months after um, beginning of the semester i did not have any difficulties in my study here. Alhamdulillah. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Ms. Levy. I hope your study going well. And mm. see you in South Korea or maybe in Yogyakarta next time, yeah? I mean, thank you uh, very much. Mm -hmm. We are very honored to have all of you speakers in this seminar today. May I conclusion, Corona also has to change the way of life of people in Taiwan or in South Korea. But now the country, both countries, uh, Taiwan and South Korea already start reopening schools and university. And what we can learn from these uh, two countries, uh, how the key of success, how to survive from this pandemic is being a discipline, high awareness and awareness and good attitude. Okay, I think we don't have enough much time on this uh, session. We We just have five minutes left for this online seminar actually. Can you give a big applause to the two speakers by clapping your hand? To appreciate for all speaker. Uh, okay, if you don't mind, at the last moment, please turn on your camera. We are going to take picture together. Yeah, at the last moment for all participants. If you are not mind, please turn on your camera. We are going to take a phone right now, yeah? Okay, but are you? Yeah. Wait. Okay, so uh, the, the, ah, there is the first slide. Okay, first slide. We are going to take picture, yeah. Smile, everybody, please smile. <laughs> Three, okay. Um, Mbak Arin, are you ready, right? Okay, now the next slide, so the second slide. Second slide, please open your uh, camera right now. Okay. We can take a picture together now. Smile, yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Enough, miss? Oh, the th third slide. Uh, our third slide. Okay. We take picture. Three, two, one. Hmm, I think everybody shy, yeah, to take picture. 
and the last slide, okay? Okay, finished. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, all of the participants. The third session of International Public Lecture has finished. Now I give the session back to the MC Pak Gifari. Thank you very much. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you, Miss Ayu, for moderating session three. Ladies and gentlemen, I represent the entire International Public Lecture Committee, expressing my gratitude for 